call to order the Kentucky Community and Technical College System Board of Regents meeting. The time is 9 o'clock a.m. The press was notified of the meeting on June the 3rd, 2020. The Honorable Mike Murray, KCTCS General Counsel, will serve as parliamentarian. Before we begin the meeting, Mr. Murray will also be reviewing some helpful reminders for our virtual meeting. Mike, please proceed. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, Regents. Um, just because we are in our virtual environment and not because not in our normal face-to-face uh, -face meeting, we have some special procedures that we would like to ask all participants to observe. Sorry, you're fading out. This is Regent Faults. I can barely hear you. Very good. How's this? Better? Yes. Okay. The votes today will be taken by roll call voice vote in which the regents will need to be seen and heard in order for the votes to count. Uh, therefore, we will kindly ask for folks who are participating but are not uh, voting regents to dim their video cameras and their microphones so that we can get more regents who are voting onto the screen and facilitate them being seen and heard. The raised hand feature in the Microsoft Teams uh, is sufficient for us to indicate that people wish to be heard, but it is not sufficient for us to use to cast votes. So only use it to recognize, uh, to ask for recognition. Um, I think that that concludes what I need to say at this point, and I'll have some further reminders when we get ready to take the votes, Madam Chair. Thank you. Are there any questions about any of that? Okay. And we also would like to say we have a virtual audience that we don't know who's out there, but they're watching <laughs> by YouTube. So um, we know that different staff and faculty and the public, um, friends, family are probably tuning in as well. So welcome. Uh, I would like to ask Hannah Rivera to please call the roll. Yes, Madam Chair. Damon Allen. Eamon is not with us. Lisa Damaris? Present. Karen Fonin? Present. Wendy Fletcher? Present. Angela Fultz? Present. Chris Girdler? Here. John McDermott? I'm here. Rhonda Rose? Here. Marsha Roth? Here. James Lee Stevens? Present. Jackie Tehan? Here. Amy Thompson? Here. Mark Wells? Here. And Chair Gail Henson? Here. Quorum is present. There being a quorum present, board business will begin with the approval of minutes from the last meeting. Uh, those begin with a. Um, are there any corrections to the KCTCS financial impact workshop minutes? Those are on page five. If there are no corrections, the minutes are approved. Okay, the minutes for the regular meeting have been distributed to all the members. Are there any corrections to the regular meeting minutes? Okay, if no corrections, their minutes are approved. That was a world ago, wasn't that? <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, are there any changes or additions to the agenda? Okay, there being none, we will proceed with the um, agenda as presented. Um, move to my report. I'd like to thank all of you for vir participating virtually today in today's meeting and for your patience. Uh, great kudos, shout outs to the staff for the tremendous work that's gone into shifting yesterday's meetings and this morning's meetings to the new format. Um, I do want you to know that we will not be having a closed session executive session today as we normally do to review the litigation report and to deal with any confidential items. Um, the online format makes it especially difficult to um, have a closed session, so we would be postponing executive session until the September meeting. So uh, we have some farewells to say, and our first order of business is to recognize 
several departures. First, uh, Rhonda Rose, who just joined us in March, uh, has taken a new job. And oh. so this will be her last meeting. Um, and Rhonda brought to us uh, the human resources background. Rhonda, is there anything you'd like to say? We appreciate your involvement this past quarter. Sorry, shortest term ever, I'm certain. Um, I just want to say I'm grateful for the opportunity to serve as the staff regent. And I want to thank the staff of KCTCS for believing in me and supporting in me and voting me in. And I also want to thank Dr. Box, Chair Hansen, and the other regents um, for and the other staff working behind the scenes for making me feel so welcome. Thank you. And we wish you well in your thank next you. Well, if you've given so much to KCTCS, so. And now um, we need to recognize Marsha Roth, Jonathan Tehan, and Jackie, uh, Jonathan McDermott, I'm sorry, and Jackie Tehan as they depart. Uh, to Regent Roth, what can we say? Um, mm -hmm. I want to thank you personally, and as well as for the board, for all that you've done. Um, it's been extensive and progressive. Um, you paved the way for me, not only as chair, but for all the regents who follow you from the four years you served as chair. You have been a fixture on the board since 2008. Uh, and we will sorely miss your leadership, your expertise, and your spunk. I will dearly miss you at these meetings, but I will see you knitting at Heine Brothers maybe <laughs> So, uh, Marsha, I'd like to give you the floor if you'd like to say any comments. Thank you. Um, never let it be said that I, you know, I wasn't quiet when I was on the board, so probably no one should expect me to be um, quiet um, as I leave. I, but I have so much to say, and I know we've got a long meeting. But hey, you're stuck. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to listen. Actually, you don't have to listen. But I would never know if you were or you weren't. So that works out well for all of us. Um, First of all, as a board, I want to thank all of you so much. Those of you I've known for a long time, those of you I've just met, you, um, you're just a terrific group of people. And uh, we all come onto this board with our own special interests and our own history. And yet when we come to a board like this, we're asked to park that at the door. And I think I can say that you, you've done that and I so appreciate it. Um, I don't know how many staff are on the board. I don't know, I mean, online, but um, Dr. Box, if they miss this golden moment, I hope you'll tell them that I have learned so much from all of them. And I'm not gonna list them because we really would be here until tomorrow. And I don't know how many wasps I can kill between now and then, Angela, but probably not a good time to start counting. Um, I admire your intelligence, your professionalism, and your dedication to KCTCS, to the students, and to the faculty. And if there are any presidents anywhere, um, I think I speak for all of us when I say how much we cherish the visits to your schools. Each school is unique and special. And my husband and I are seriously sad about losing our supply of KCTCS swag. Um, we figure our water bottles might be in need of resupply in 2025. So I hope there'll be some kind of reunion at one of the schools because I will definitely miss that. Dr. Box, I know you're there. Um, I've learned so much from listening to you, uh, but even more from watching you. You have a quiet <clears throat> authority that is amplified by a strength of character I can only admire. So we're in difficult times. And along with um, my time, I've, you know, I've had time to knit and I wore it just to prove to you that I actually do knit when I'm reflecting. I've been reflecting a lot and some of my reflections are dark and despairing and some of it's hopeful. As far as the system is concerned, I marvel at the foresight the legislators and the governor had over 20 years ago they put together a plan to consolidate disparate institutions of higher learning in order to make one strong central one. And in the best of times, we might not notice how brilliant that was, but we are not in the best of times. 
And it is important to think about where some of our colleges might be without the support of KCTCS. And where would our students be? And where would business and industry be? The system brings together and, and under Dr. Box's leadership has amplified to all the citizens of the Commonwealth of Kentucky how important KCTCS and our individual colleges are. And I don't believe that could be done one-on-one. -on -one. We're stronger as a whole and I'm so proud of this system. Lately, we understand how things we once took for granted are things we miss most. Um, a Zoom call with friends and family just doesn't make up for a hug and a kiss. But how we as a board rise to meet these times will be talked about for years to come. I know you will put personal interests aside and be aware that membership on this board is a privilege and a duty. In addition to swearing you never fought a duel, you swore to represent the people of the Commonwealth when you joined this board. I look forward to watching all of you meet this challenge in the future. Thanks again so much for the honor of serving on this board and working with you all. Let's all give her a round of applause. That was beautiful. Thank you. Um, long time. So now to John and Jackie, our student regents. Um, you have brought such a unique perspective that we are grateful for. Last uh, spring, last summer, when we, I heard your presentations uh, that got you elected, I was so impressed then. And you have just fulfilled the promises you made and shown wisdom in leadership. I've been especially impressed by your professionalism, your insight, and your participation in so many different activities this year, many that we don't even know about. Um, I just heard that a few weeks ago, you served on a distinguished pa student panel for the Higher Education User Group, HIUG, whose attendees are from institutions all around the world who specialize in higher ed technologies, admissions, student records, student finance, and financial aid. I hope that you have found your time on the board a worthwhile experience that will not only enhance your appreciation for the college and KCTCS, but will enhance your professional development as a leader. John and Jackie, would you like to say anything? And we'll start with Jackie. Gotta unmute myself first. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody that has made my one and only term a wonderful term. I wish it could be longer because I've enjoyed it greatly and I've learned and gleaned from every one of you. Um, I feel in the last year I've I've grown so much. There's not even words I can put to it. Like there's so many different people I could point out, things I got from each of you, but overall it's just a matter that I, I've been very blessed to <clears throat> sit and listen more than anything, because I haven't really done a lot of talking during the meetings, but I've listened and I've gained a whole lot from each of you. And and for that, I'm eternally grateful because it's changed me and it's helped me have a different perspective on how higher education runs. And it's it's caused me to have a deeper appreciation for KCTCS and more than I ever thought I would. And so I just, I've loved every minute of it and I'm so thankful. Thank you. Thank you, John. Ooh, it's gonna be hard to follow up, um, Marsha and Jackie. Uh, Marsha, you made me a little emotional with your your speech, and I've only got to know you for a year so far. Um, <laughs> I guess a, a little less than that. Uh, but thank you all, uh, each and every one of you, so much for the wonderful opportunity that I've had to be here and sit with you, uh, to be in a room full of excellent leaders who all are very passionate, very dedicated, uh, very thoughtful. I've learned something from everybody. And um, like Jackie said, being able to just sit quietly sometimes and watch the board work um, really has helped me grow as a leader and as a person. I feel like um, I've gained more in this last year than probably the, the last uh, three, four or five uh, put together. 
it has been an absolute pleasure to share my voice and try and represent um, the students and also just the people of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. I, I felt a, a great burden and responsibility in doing so, but it's been a, a very happy thing as much as it's been a hard thing. Um, I was told when I came on the board that it would feel uh, too short and that by the time I finally understood what I was doing and where I was going, it would be over. And that ended up being very true. Um, and so I'm, I'm very sad to be stepping away from this as a student, um, but I hope that I will find ways that I can engage with you all and um, continue to do my part to help KCTCS because I, I truly believe in our vision. Um, and I just wanna say, a sincere thank you to everyone. Thank you. Let's give them a round of applause. That's just wonderful. Um, we we want to thank both of you, um, and um, of course, Marcia, too, uh, for your time and dedication. And Jackie, as you transfer, and um, also John, as you transfer, we just give you our support. We see big things for you. We're not sure what you're, I know you're not sure what they are, but. Uh, we're so interested and committed to your success, um, so we wish you happiness. Uh, you will get the standard board appreciation of, uh, token of appreciation in the mail, as well as the framed resolution, and those will be sent to you after this meeting. Um, anyway, so now to the last item of my report, the presidential search. Um, on March 1, I sent out a revised timeline re regarding this presidential search to the board and the presidential search committee. Um, because of the COVID virus, um, this was not a good time for anybody to be looking for a position or for us to do our work. So as it stands, we will resume our work on the presidential profile in August by publishing the electronic survey and seeking various input from our various stakeholders, including you as regents. And we'll be certainly integrating uh, a lot of the thoughts from the evaluation that uh, you were so thoughtful as to, to give. Uh, we'll also be getting input from the, the presidents and other people. Once that input is received, the committee will continue its work with the search uh, committee consultant, Preston Pulliams, to develop the presidential profile with the goal of publishing that and advertising it in mid-August. So the revised timeline can be found in Onboard uh, in the, under the Presidential Search Resource folders. If you need any help getting to that, just ask um, Keith or Cindy or somebody to help you. I do want to point out that with Hannah being on maternity leave almost any day now, <laughs> I will be working closely with Jackie Cecil and Pat Preston Pulliams to ensure that the search stays on track. Um, at our March meeting, you will remember that we voted for, uh, for Paul Zarapata, Vice President of Technology Solutions, to serve as interim president of KCTCS beginning July 1st. Uh, of course, with this pandemic and the subsequent pushback of Dr. Vox's retirement to September 30th, for which we are so grateful, uh, the new start date for Paul will be October 1st. The contract has not been finalized yet, but will be in the coming weeks. And this will outline all the necessary and usual contract provisions for Paul's interim period. I've been working with Jackie Cecil, who's KCTCS HR Director, and Mike Murray, uh, General Counsel, to put into place a contract that will last tentatively until December the 31st, 2020, subject to the new president's start date. Should a president uh, not be able to re assume the role January 1st, 2021, Paul's contract may be extended one month, uh, month to month until the earlier, uh, the date of the KCTCS board meeting, uh, board chair informs the interim president this position is no longer needed or the new KCTCS president takes office. In his time as interim, Dr. Zarapata will not be serving dual roles. He will be serving only as KCTCS interim president as a full-time job. Paul's second in command in the area of technology solutions will step up to fill Paul's normal role in his absence. <laughs> Dr. Zarapata will be compensated at the same annual rate as Dr. Box. He'll be compensated for his role as interim president only, not in his role as interim president, plus his normal salary of vice president. 
it is a best practice across the system that the compensation for the interim college president be based on the salary of the departing president. So his benefits will remain the same as they are in his vice president role. And after the interim president uh, period ends, Dr. Zarapata will resume his current vice president position. Um, that concludes my report. Uh, now we'll move to the president's report. Um, President Box, as you know, a few weeks ago, I asked the board what questions, concerns they had around COVID-19 and how it is affecting their system. I was extremely pleased to get back so many, over 40 uh, questions back from the regions, ranging from how we were dealing with faculty moving to online instruction, to how we would uh, market ourselves in the new environment. So I appreciate your quick pivot to change your quarterly president's report into a special report for this meeting that focuses only on the pandemic and its effects on KCTCS. So if you would please, would you share the report at this time? Dr. Box. Thank you, Chair Henson. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, this has been an interesting time to say the least. It was just right after our March board meeting that the governor uh, announced that uh, the state would basically be closing. Uh, on March 16th, we moved all of our courses to, re to a remote teaching format. And that uh, continued throughout the spring semester. Of course, as you're aware, uh, online teaching works really well for uh, lecture-based classes, but it doesn't necessarily address the needs of our technical classes. And so during the months of April and May, the chancellor's office was busy on trying to determine a way uh, to address the lack of ability of our technical faculty to teach out the students in the technical programs. And so uh, we worked with Dr. Aaron Thompson, uh, the president of CPE, uh, on uh, some ideas of how we could reopen. Uh, we, within KCTCS, put together our own plan. We had developed a template uh, with the college presidents and uh, we decided that um, in discussions with the eight university presidents, CPE asked us if we would put forward our template. So we did put our template forward. The university presidents liked it, and uh, the CPE adjusted it slightly to address the dormitories and athletic events for the universities. But that plan for reopening was then submitted on May 16th, and uh, we then uh, presented our plan on May 20th to CPE, and um, that was uh, based on a three-phase approach with phase one matching up with the governor's phase one, phase two matching up with the governor's phase two, and then phase three, also with the governor's phase three, but all the university presidents and KCTCS uh, just uh, presented a plan for phase three that said to be developed because we, uh, it was too far out for us to plan on what we would be doing later in the year. Uh, to, ad to address going into our phase two uh, on May, 28th, uh, KCTCS and eight public, public universities received permission from CPE to begin a gradual phasing in of reopening our institutions as part of the governor's phase two reopening calendar. So, so that was a June 1 start date for all the universities and us. And so on June 1, we had some of our offices at our colleges open up for walk-in traffic. Of course, all of our uh, courses remained in an online environment. Um, the remaining staff that are on campus are, are basically dealing with student services 
and primarily financial aid and enrollment services, and then any type of uh, maintenance and operation in, uh, uh, employees that would need to keep the campus uh, clean and safe. We also now are preparing for the July, which is the beginning of the phase three reopening calendar. Uh, we have developed our plan for that piece and have sent it on forward to CPE. Uh, we have gotten permission to go forward with phase our phase three and phase four openings. However, uh, all, of that, all of that could change depending on uh, if there is a, a escalation of the coronavirus, which may uh, cause the governor or CPE to postpone our plans for, for uh, July and August in particular. So the way we're going to handle this report today is I'm going to ask each of the cabinet members to speak about what the, they are, have been doing in their area. And the first cabinet member I'm gonna call on is, the, is Chancellor Williams, who will talk about the academic impact of COVID-19 and the plans that have been based around that. Chancellor Williams. Thank you, Dr. Box. Good morning, Regents. Uh, please allow me first to congratulate and thank our student faculty and staff representatives to the board. The spring term was a really hard one with a lot of new challenges, um, pivoting to remote instruction, having children at home, for some not having internet access. They and those rep they represent really took on a challenge and I'm grateful to them for their efforts. I'd like to hit some high points out of the report that we've shared. As Dr. Box noted, during the weeks of March 16th and March 23rd, KCTCS classes moved to a remote teaching format. While this was primarily online, it included a lot of remote teaching strategies, particularly for students without internet access. At some colleges, it was culinary instructors meeting their students in a parking lot to hand over food items to create their own labs at home. In some cases, it was a faculty member working with a student with a cell phone, but uh, everybody prevailed and they were all very entrepreneurial and innovative in their strategies. As Dr. Box has mentioned, many of our technical students or others with labs or clinical needs received an incomplete grade and to quickly get those students completed, we'd had them in our, in our campuses under very stringent safety guidelines uh, starting around May 20th. Um, in this reopening, we've carefully followed the healthy at work minimum requirements, including wearing masks, social distancing, and health checks. You'll hear more about those later. But um, I really do wanna stress that no student or faculty member who was concerned for their health and safety was required to participate. Again, individuals have through December to get these classes made up. Where we were most concerned was our dual credit senior students who have to have a grade by June 30th to get their keys money calculated. So colleges have been really focusing on those students. Uh, in general, faculty and students appreciated the opportunity and we've had some great experiences in those first two weeks. Compliance to the safety protocols was strong with only a few challenges to them and uh, access to complete courses continues through June 30th. This summer, we're offering a variety of summer term courses. Any course that started May 18th through June 30th was to be offered only online. Uh, workforce solutions and regular credit classes can be offered face-to-face -face starting in July, again, following all of the Healthy at Work requirements. Beginning August 17th, barring any additional required pandemic response, fall term classes will be offered in a variety of formats as we have done in the past. There will be fully online courses, face-to-face -face courses, and some that are a mixture of both. We already have a strong hybrid or half online, roughly half online, half on ground course of offerings available. But to be ready, in case that we do have to go to some closures or we have students who, or faculty who become ill, for example, and there's a delay in instruction, we will have a strong online or remote instruction component for all of those face-to-face -face classes. So our faculty really have been doing a lot of preparation to be ready to add that to their course repertoire. 
There will be, as usual, a variety of scheduling options available, 16-week, 12-week, and 8-week. And many of the colleges have added additional 8-week sessions to try and make things go quickly. Our colleges are working with their partner schools and universities as they plan for the fall and may adjust their course schedules because we know that our K-12 schools may take some different scheduling approaches. And so our colleges are going to have to consider that as they look at their own face-to-face uh, -face requirements in particular. Our workforce solutions staff continue to work with businesses already. Our assessment centers are open to do pre-employment assessments and to do things like state registered nurse aid evaluations to help get those folks back to work. We are down in enrollment right now. Uh, today's report hasn't come out yet with enrollment numbers, but each week we are bringing, bringing back those numbers. I know you'll hear about that from others, but again, we're, we're really looking to see what the K-12 schools will do. In my opinion, I think that once parents understand where their children can be during the day, it will really help them. So as we go on, uh, we did do a lot of training for both students and faculty to help move this forward. Uh, um, almost 10,000 spring term course sections moved from face-to-face -face or hybrid instruction to fully remote and online. So quickly that happened. Faculty were assigned mentors. They were provided a lot of extra training. The uh, online learning area in the chancellor's office created an entire remote teaching toolkit that was available online to anybody who wanted to see it. Um, many technical faculty particularly required additional support. So we were also able to find some simulations that we could put into the online or remote environment and were able to redirect some Perkins funding to, to achieve that. Um, the online staff also created, and this had really been part of a, a year's worth of work anyway, we're creating with faculty an orientation for online learning. That was finalized. It will now be available for summer and fall terms, and that includes common technology resources available to all KCTCS students. So any student has access to that orientation. Um, all of the colleges did extra training in, uh, in online, but over the summer we also re redirected Perkins dollars to offer four-day boot camps for faculty to plan and develop courses for hybrid instruction and to efficiently navigate teaching using Blackboard. So we've been offering these boot camps. They began in May. They'll be offered through July. And currently we have over 560 faculty registered to attend sessions. One of the things that has uh, most impressed me during this response was how we all pulled together. Um, many of the peer teams, as you know, we have a representative from each college on multiple peer teams. Um, the online learning peer team, the academic council of the chief academic officers, and I'm sure the other peer teams as well, started meeting weekly to check in, share practices, support each other. Uh, this has been a lot of effort and work, and I really appreciate how they've stepped up. And I really appreciate also the faculty. You know, we are a shared governance system. Our faculty are important to that. Um, the faculty senate really swung into gear through email, through meetings, and really were part of the multiple academic decisions that were made around grades, around placement requirements, around how we would respond to the pandemic. So that's a very quick overview of several pages in here. And I'm sorry I can't cover everything, but I'm happy to answer questions for you after the meeting today. Dr. Box, thank you. Thank you, Chancellor. And we're going to move on to, to administrative services and, and Vice President follow-up. Good morning. You've heard a lot about the CARES Act. That stands for the Corona Aid Relief and Economic Security Act. Within that act is the Higher Education Emergency Relief Fund. CARES Act was signed into law on March 27th, provided approximately 14 billion in relief funding for higher education institutions. The language in CARES provides broad discretion for the disbursement and administration of the uh, HERF funds and breaks them down into two separate categories, student aid and institutional aid. KCTCS was awarded $17.9 million in for each of those categories, student aid and institutional aid, for a total of $35.8 million. The CARES Fund has been released over the last several weeks 
such as in April 9th, the U.S. Department of Education announced initial plans and goals and expectations for approximately $6.3 billion in institutional earmark funds for student aid. The goal of these funds were to provide students with emergency aid to help with grants to cover expenses related to the disruption of campus operations due to the coronavirus. And colleges have the individual responsibility for determining those grants and how they will be distributed to the students. Dr. McCall, when she speaks to you, talk more about how those dollars have been distributed, and I'll let her speak to that. But on April 20th, first, the Department of Education also announced a second portion of CARES, and that had to do with the institutional funds and providing coverage for those. Under the institutional funds, we created at the system office, working with the colleges, a frequently asked questions and answers to provide guidance because the guidance from the Department of Education has been rather sporadic and didn't give a bit vague at times, and we're still working through that. But it says generally to the institution funds are prevent, prepare for the response to the coronavirus to cover any costs associated with costs that do not include payment to contractors for the provision of pre-enrollment recruitment activities, endowments, or capital outlays associated with facilities related to athletics, sectarian instruction, or religious worship. So we have done a number of things to try to include those with reimbursements that can be made to students, as well as significant changes in our delivery of instruction. We have done a lot, I won't go into all of the various things, but for you know, purchase of equipment for software to help pay for online licensing fees. To uh, and Paul will talk more about some things that his area has done. We've loaned out a lot of equipment to uh, other uh, medical services. In fact, we've loaned out uh, 32 different types of ventilators and things of that nature, which most likely will never be returned, and we'll have to invest in those, and that's about $1.3 million that we'll be able to purchase new equipment to replace those. We've done a lot of third-party service contracts to provide for different uh, programs and, and online program management to help each student with their platform. We've bought technology to help students. We've done a number of online resources to help students and things of that nature, and emergency grants and aids, which Dr. McCall will speak about. With regard to our facility measures, personal equipment, uh, protective equipment, PPEs, you often heard so much on the news. The system office has worked significantly to work with the colleges to buy um, personal equipment and buy it in bulk to try to get it at cost. Because you may recall, kind of like the shelves when you went to the supermarket, a lot of things were just not there. I mean, it was just like gone. The locust, the biblical locust had come through. But we were able to work with the chamber and able to purchase like 10,000 different you know, types of masks and things to be able to provide the colleges. We expanded their purchase authority so that a purchase up to $20,000 could be done locally. And they've had a lot of success with that. A lot of times we may not be able to get it at a national level, but their local vendor may have some of those things in stock, whether they be uh, cleansing wipes, um, face protection, and some of our colleges have been very instrumental in providing that. We've used every kind of state contract to do things with. We work with our networks and our purchasing cooperatives uh, with various um, different groups there. I won't go into all those, but we've done a lot to try to help the colleges and also be able to provide for PPE all during the, the last three months plus. It seems like it's, I don't know where it's gone to. We've done a number of things with facility measures. If you go into the colleges or you go into the system office this time, you'll see all types of signage. You know, we've marked the floors this direction, that direction we put up window clings. Uh, in fact, we purchased over 200 different window clings and things uh, to be able to mark, whether it be the bathrooms or offices, about wearing protective equipment, about washing your hands and the various actions to help prevent and to uh, stay the spread of the coronavirus. We have worked with our health and safety officers and staffs across the colleges to provide cleaning protocols, to sanitize employee stations, uh, instructional space. We're still doing lots of things along that line all through the summer and in preparation for the fall semester because at this point, you know, we're hopeful that uh, it won't be the issue that it once was, but we've seen, as you've seen in the news the last few days in Arizona, popping back up. But we work with uh, staff to also create healthy at work requirements and to reopen uh, with proper guidance and protocol. 
we've had our facility uh, staff and janitorial services. We've worked with them both here at the system office as well as with the colleges to make sure we've got the proper protocols in place and they're being followed. We've worked with Kentucky uh, Emergency Management Public Assistance in that sense, FEMA, on uh, trying to get resources and getting assistance and guidance. The Kentucky Board of Emergency Medical Services that also reports to us and working with them. We've created at the governor's direction with healthy at work officers uh, through the governor's guidelines. And they meet weekly on a conference call much like this, go over the things that are happening at the colleges, making sure that we've been given clear guidance, getting their questions and answers provided, and exchanging information on how to do things and making things better and working through those. We've done temperature screenings and we've, through Paul's team, uh, thanks to him, we've created an app of which I, as an employee, fill out a form and do um, self-screening before coming in so that it's on my path. All employees have access to this and it gives them back a badge to not only them, but to their supervisor that they are able to report to work. Uh, so they receive notification. We receive notification. The Healthy at Work officer does as well as supervisor if someone fails to meet those criteria and those criteria meet the governor's health or temperature screenings. Uh, we've had significant budget effects, particularly early on and still so, in uh, working through acquiring the PPE, doing things, the constant cleaning, the uh, securing of uh, P, you know, PPE and just maintenance and operations and trying to make our classes and things available uh, online and the face-to-face -face classrooms and how we're going to be able to address those and turning to things to online, uh, hybrid. Uh, there's just been an enormous amount of costs. I won't go into all of those. I mentioned before, you know, we've had numerous medical supplies and equipments that we have shared with local area medical centers in order to try to uh, help uh, control the coronavirus. And uh, despite all that, you know, that we have done a lot of things within uh, all of the areas all across the colleges to position ourselves. And in some cases, uh, we, there's just been various things done. And unlike our counterparts, maybe at the University of Louisville, University of Kentucky and our research institutions, we are a bit different in that sense because we've not had to um, furlough significant amount of staff and things of that nature because we are not dependent upon athletic revenue or upon medical center revenue and or housing and dining. We don't have to underwrite those things. So that's been a positive thing and a great difference that KCTCS does have an advantage over. Uh, with regard to possible state appropriations, enrollment decline, we are nervous about those and you see that affected in the budget. We have been noticed that uh, by the state office and budget director that we are having to give up a 1% uh, state appropriation amount at this time. We hope that doesn't go any further. But the colleges have, as you see in the proposed budget, uh, have used uh, and built in uh, the rainy day funds in order to try to address that, to do things with not only the physical plan and other types of things and cleaning for major capital projects. Uh, so I think we're prepared for 2021 as best we can be, given whatever the new normal brings. So we're working towards that. Um, I'll mention also as part of this report, the Kentucky Employees Retirement System, you know, we spent at the March board meeting a significant workshop with regard to that. You may recall that with the General Assembly that uh, we were preparing for House Bill 1 of last year's July 2019 special session to make a decision with regard to CARES Act. Uh, our CARES uh, and in KERS, not K or not C-A-R-E-S, CARES in that sense, the General Assembly, but they extended that. We are fortunate to get the windfall of the 49.47 rate through this fiscal year. All of the things with regard to the Kentucky Employees Retirement System uh, are extended through December 31, uh, 2020, and we expect to have a valuation report for that come uh, June 30, they'll do the evaluation. We likely won't get that report until sometime in September. We will be in probably not in time to make the board meeting for September, but we'll come back to the board with additional research analysis and review for a board decision in December of 2020. 
And as Chancellor Williams said, I'll be glad to answer any questions you have. I appreciate the opportunity. And please know that uh, both the colleges as well as the system office are working very hard to keep our students, our faculty, and our staff safe through this entire pandemic. Thank, thank you, Wendell. Uh, let's go now to Vice President Gloria McCall. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Dr. Box, Chair Henson, and other regents. I'm going to give a, a brief update on student services as related to the coronavirus pandemic. As Wendell mentioned above, the CARES Act provides two streams of funding, one in the area of student emergency funds, and the other, as he said, was institutional aid. My focus will be strictly on the student emergency fund, which was, which is the $17.9 million. As related to the student aid funds, eligible expenses were somewhat restrictive from the Department of Education that include these particular areas that students could receive funds in. Course materials and technology requirements, food and housing insecurities, that included our food pantries on our college campuses, and other expenses such as medical, child care, and financial hardship related to the pandemic. In order to participate in the CARES Act, all of our institutions uh, were required to complete an application. Um, and each of those, <clears throat> each of our 16 colleges did do that in a very timely manner. The funds were made available and we have one year to use those funds. The Department of Education also requires that each institution after the 30, first 30 days from the date of acceptance or approval to use the funds must post on their websites a uh, report indicating how the funds are being used. And we are doing that uh, on behalf of the colleges from the system office. Every 45 days beyond that, we also have to give a report on how these funds are being used. Now, each of our colleges also developed an action plan as required by President Box to identify how they would use the plan, use, distribute these funds to our students and require necessary documentation uh, on behalf of the students so that if when and if we are audited, we can justify and show how the funds are being used. Each college also has in place a special committee, and the committee reviews each of the applications and decide on the amount of funds awarded to students. Just as uh, information for you, uh, the average amount of funds that each student receives is about $1,600, and that's a give and take, depending on their needs, as written in the application that they su submit. We have developed at the system office an online request form that streamlines the process for students to allow them to get the funds as quickly as possible. I'm now going to shift the, convert, the discussion or my uh, update to the CPE funding uh, that was also awarded to KCTCS. KCTCS was awarded $120,000 from the Council on Post-Secondary Education. The funds are being used to also address obstacles students, uh, to student success due to the pandemic crisis. Each of our 16 colleges was awarded an equal share of $7,500, and the primary <clears throat> focus in use of these funds is to focus on students' health and well-being, food and housing insecurity, and technology support. The next topic I will highlight very briefly is the essential student services and outreach that we provided through technology during this pandemic uh, crisis. Uh, in the early months of the pandemic, student support services were provided through the use of technology only, and that was phones, emails, text messaging, which is SignalVine, and you'll hear more about that later and other technology platforms such as Starfish, SignalVine, Connect, as well as using our local college websites. 
not to mention some of our services continue to remain available for students 24 seven via the KCTCS call center. Students had access to current information concerning the operations of the college by calling their college primary number or emailing questions to the college website and or individual student support services offices. All of our colleges, as well as the system office, have a COVID-19 website that is updated regularly and has links to all pertinent information, including local, state, and federal resources. All colleges also allow more on-campus traffic, which began early June. These offerings of in-person student services has now resumed. When we see that there is uh, an increase in student or visitor traffic on the colleges, our campus services will be limited primarily to students with scheduled appointments. And then lastly, the topic I'd like to uh, share a little bit about is uh, fixing or helping students uh, with their career goals. KCTCS students, uh, we believe that our colleges, and we have worked very hard and diligently to ensure that KCTCS is student ready, that is prepared to provide opportunities to engage our students in meaningful reflection about personal and professional life paths, noting that students' goals and their paths may have changed in the wake of the pandemic. Our KCTCS staff and faculty are very prepared to counsel and provide when necessary to redirect students to new programs of study that will lead to a viable short-term credential as well as an associate degree or pathways that support transfer to four-year institutions. Uh, I'm going to pause here to see if there are any questions or comments, but I thank you for allowing me to share just a few highlights of the work that we've done during this pandemic crisis. Thank you, Dr. Box. Thank you, Dr. McCall. Uh, let's hold our questions till the end, if you don't mind. Uh, let's move on now because one of the things that we've realized uh, at the beginning of this pandemic and going to a remote work and remote learning environment was the need for constant communications. And our marketing departments, uh, both at the system office and our colleges, really stepped up. And I'm going to call on Terry Giltner now to talk a little bit about our marketing efforts. Thank you, Dr. Box and Chair Henson and Board of Regents. Uh, exactly when the uh, pandemic hit, we had to really sit down with our marketing peer team and regroup. And beyond just the general crisis issues that we had to, to support and support with communication, we had to look at everything we were doing. And I'm going to highlight some of those, but one is one of the first things we did is we felt like we had to do some research among uh, students to get a sense of where their heads were, how this was going to impact their college plans, um, how they were dealing with the enrollment process when everything has to be done with um, virtually. So some of the things that we did find, and I, I do say the group that we that we researched were prospective students that were already in our pipeline. These were students that had come onto our websites and filled out an inquiry form. And we did an even balance between traditional students and non-traditional students. And what we learned is, as you can imagine, most of them had been negatively impacted, either financially or just in their lives in general, due to the pandemic. Also, uh, a little less than half said, yes, this was going to affect um, and change their college going plans. Now, a lot of this, they're, you know, they're frozen. Uh, there was so much uncertainty and a lot of this, of course, came out of the research. I will say the research was done in May. Um, they also mentioned that the, the pandemic had made the enrollment process more difficult because they weren't certain about what programs were offered. Uh, you know, a lot of words, is everything online? You know, how do they find those services? And some of this is related directly to 
of high school students in the spring of their summer year, of spring, spring of their uh, high school senior year, they are getting a lot of support and direct um, uh, counseling with not only our college recruiters and admission staff, but also the high school. And all that was eliminated this year. So we feel like there, there, there is a lot of uncertainty, knowing what to do next and needing a lot of help. And that's one of the things we learned in the research. They're saying, we need, uh, we need to talk to you all. We need a lot more help. And of course, all this has to be done virtually. Uh, there was a, a, a little concern among online learning, but not too much. Uh, most of that concern really occurred with the traditional students. They really prefer more of that on-campus environment, uh, and that was a, a, big, a, a big learning. The other thing we really looked at was our creative. You know, at uh, the, the last board meeting, we introduced the real world uh, creative, and we had just launched that campaign March 1st. And so about midway through, uh, we stopped it. And because we really did not feel like the images we were showing would resonate with the audiences uh, via the camp pandemic. We did feel like the real world messaging was great. We just needed to change that. So we did that and you can see in this report how we pivoted it. Uh, we, we dealt with the uncertainty in Frozen by telling them they can stay close to home and be safe. Uh, they're making, you know, those people that think they want a gap here and they don't know what to do, we're saying don't give up on your dreams. We're really pushing hard um, that we're at least one half the price of a university. And also we're doing a lot of messaging for those folks that are uh, uh, freshmen and sophomores that, you know, they're paying a lot of money and they may not get that whole campus experience this next year. So we, we put a pause on that campaign and we launched a new one. Uh, last week, and we changed our targeted audience. Uh, the last targeted audience was mostly heavily focused on adults. We pivoted here and we said, oh, we really think the low hanging fruit right now are high school seniors uh, and their parents, along with our dual credit seniors who have already been taking courses with us, along with freshmen and sophomore. So that's who our campaign is targeting. As I said, it launched last week it is mostly a digital campaign and it will run through mid-august and then in mid-august we will pivot again and really go after folks that are coming out of, of that are finding that their jobs no longer are there or they're re wanting to rethink their career to be maybe something that is more essential so we'll be doing that as we move into to august uh, i do want to say that our real world campaign, we really feel like is going to align perfectly with the national campaign that is supposed to start uh, sometime this month or early July. And uh, they will really mesh very well when that campaign launch launches. I'd be happy to answer any other questions and uh, thank you all so much. Thank you, Terry. We appre appreciate that and, and, the, and the comprehensive plan that uh, marketing has put together uh, to communicate to our constituents. I'd like to now move us on to Vice President Paul Zarapata to talk about technology solutions. Sorry, I forgot to unmute. Good grief. Thank you, Dr. Box, and good morning to everyone. Um, as most of you know, broadband availability across the Commonwealth is severely lacking in some areas across the state and COVID-19 really exacerbated this as libraries and other locations for public internet became unavailable. There's a digital divide that was growing wider. We knew we had to act quickly or our students were going to be left behind. You are all excellent readers, so I'm not going to read what you have in front of you. However, the theme I want to point out for you is for both the parking lot Wi-Fi and the low cost computing devices is the scale that KCTCS has as a system and the influence that we have with partners and vendors because of our size and strength in numbers. We swing a big stick and we expect a lot out of our vendor partners and they stepped up for us. When the pandemic hit, Cisco had to triage which customers received networking, networking devices and because of our size, we were given priority to receive this equipment very quickly. We were competing with the military, hospitals, large universities and other organizations. Not only did KCTCS students benefit from the access to broadband, 
but many students from other universities came to our parking lots so they could complete coursework. This project was also featured nationally in a news article by Internet2. And similarly, similar, similarly, Dell heavily discounts devices for us because of our sheer size and reach across the state. This buying power is one of the many benefits of having this system. In less than two weeks, we were able to develop specifications on a device that cost less than $250 and was able to run all KCTCS technologies needed in the classroom. Lastly, I'm very proud as to how quickly everyone has adapted to using Microsoft Teams across the system. Back in March, we were on a more leisurely path to migrating from Skype to Microsoft Teams. However, the pandemic turbocharged this project and in June, we will be completely migrated. I'm very proud of all my staff and their breakneck work ethic during this unprecedented event. But I would like to especially thank Amy Coleman, Stephanie Prophet, Jeremy Miller and Keith DeYoung for all their help in getting this board meeting coordinated and running smooth on teams. I'm blessed to have a great team and I'm, I'm blessed to uh, be a part of KCTCS. This is the end of my report and please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Paul. We appreciate that. Uh, now I'm going to move us to institutional advancement and, and Vice President Moeller. Thank you. Like Paul, I'm not going to read my report. I will uh, I mentioned in the um, the finance committee yesterday that we had developed a guidance document for college leaders to uh, guide them through the pandemic. So I'm going to read seven sentences that uh, just bullet points from that document that help illustrate how we got to some of the examples that you see the colleges had uh, evidenced here in this document. Um, that planning document said that we encouraged them to uh, seek advancement activities that um, keep folks engage and encourage social connections. We've heard a lot about physical or social distancing. We're encouraging them to encourage social connections, um, by, but maintaining uh, physical um, separation, uh, focus on building long-term relationships, uh, being the form to increase connectedness and sense of community, uh, focusing on stewardship. Uh, if there's anything we learned through 2001, 2008, is that the real risk of an economic downturn is not folks that are not willing to give. It's um, our inability or our reluctance to uh, timely communicate impact of the gift um, and the result of uh, donor attrition. Um, we encourage them to seek ideas that empower uh, the, um, uh, the institutions, let's see, seek ideas that empower the community members to pull together um, to be part of a the common greater good, but also be open to ideas that empower the institution to serve the community and to communicate how they're uh, helping serve um, the current needs of the community. And so that really reflects what is listed here is our colleges really went um, really quickly into action to find ways to meet the local needs. Um, and I won't read all the stuff that's there, um, but it really shows that um, there's been a lot of work. And I'd be remiss to say um, the re initial report that I submitted to Hannah was about 20 pages. So this is really just a, a top of the, uh, really scraping the surface of what um, the response was. So thank you. Thank you, Ben. We appreciate that. Uh, of course, one of the concerns that, that uh, anytime you move into a new environment, uh, there's going to be individuals who are uh, concerned about that uh, new environment, especially uh, whether or not uh, the colleges are doing enough for them and what kind of liability that we would have. So I'm going to call on our general counsel, Mike Murray, to talk a little bit about that. Thank you, Dr. Box. Good morning, Regents. Again, um, I'm not one of those attorneys that gets paid by uh, by the hour or by the word, so I'm going to try to be brief too. Um, and my comments are reflective of the fact that we are not in a closed executive session. Um, I've said before to you um, that the law is generally a reactive and not a proactive thing, and and so uh, the presentation of the not novel coronavirus is not one of those different things. So we are somewhat in a wait and see environment. Um, with limited exceptions, there aren't uh, a lot of uh, blanket statutory prohibitions on suing an organization over COVID-19 exposure. And at last check, there was something around 900 claims of COVID-19 exposure filed uh, across the country. Um, and we are not uh, like any other organization, we are not 
protected from some sort of claim uh, that might arise. Um, we do have a general framework uh, in the law from other issues, liability issues, that kind of gives us some guidance about what to do uh, to guide our actions and make sure that we are uh, comporting ourselves appropriately from a legal and compliance standpoint. Uh, our most likely exposures are going to come from claims of three different types. One would be failure to maintain a safe environment. One would be a claim that we have violated an individual's rights, uh, including uh, students and employees with disabilities. And one would be a claim for refunds as a result of moving our classes that were uh, on campus to online uh, situations. While there is never an absolute guarantee that we would not be sued over something, we are complying rigorously with the directives of the governor's office and with the best practices as espoused by the CDC and local health authorities. And we believe that strict adherence to those guidelines and those standards will be evidence that we are acting reasonably under the circumstances. We also think that that reasonably prepares us to defend against any actions that may come against us. Uh, and another no note to, to make here is that it's probably going to be very difficult for a plaintiff to prove um, by the required legal standard that their exposure to COVID-19 came solely and approximately from being in our environment. Uh, suffice it to say, we think that we are well suited to confront any legal and compliance challenges that may present to us, but our main focus is making sure that we are helping the colleges meet the evolving needs of our students, uh, as well as the needs of our employers and the communities that we serve. So that's my report, and if there are any questions, I'll be happy to take those. Thank you, Mike. We, we appreciate that. Uh, included with your documentation for this meeting and, and with this report was our Healthy at Work Welcome Back Plan. Uh, that was something that uh, we felt like we needed to have uh, published and out to the public as well as uh, internally. Uh, each of these plans are being uh, adapted for each of the 16 colleges so they'll be able to put them out in their local communities. But what's important to you on page three of this, of this plan is the listing of our healthy at work officers and online today with us is someone you do not know but you will probably get to know quite a bit in the coming months and that is our healthy at work officer at the system level uh, christy giles who's going to talk to you not only about our healthy at work officers but also about the 61 member COVID response team that has representatives from the colleges and our system office and our healthy at work officers at each of the 16 colleges. So Christy, you want to talk a little bit? Good morning. Thank you, Dr. Box. We have got healthy at work officers at each of the colleges and I meet with this group virtually each week not only are the healthy at work officers part of this team, but we've included the HR director so that everyone is on the same page. Um, the, the healthy at work officers are responsible for sure, ensuring compliance with all reopening guidelines and addressing questions and concerns from employees and students with regard to safety at the colleges, um, concerns with spreading the virus, concerns with personal protective needs and, and things of that nature. So we meet each week to discuss not only best practices going on at the colleges, but to address questions and concerns coming from the college communities. This is an excellent opportunity for colleges to, to hear what's going on at, at other colleges and, and maybe make some adjustments to what they're doing and, and move forward. But it's just an excellent communication opportunity so that everyone stays on the same page. The response team, the COVID response team that Dr. Box mentioned, 
is a, another team that consists of designated representatives from all of the colleges. As he mentioned, we've got 61 members on this team, and they range from operations to human resources, faculty, staff, et cetera. Um, the, the primary responsibility of this group is to gather and share information as it relates to the, the KCTCS reopening response um, again, sharing best practices, asking questions, and getting answers. Um, so we have very good participation in this, and a lot of good information sharing is, is being done, and things seem to be going well with the reopening as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. We really appreciate uh, Christy becoming our uh, COVID-19 czar. She is responsible for keeping us all in the know and for keeping everyone following the state guidelines and the CDC guidelines. Uh, one of the things that Christy does is produce a weekly report that then we have the opportunity to go over with our 16 presidents. Each Monday, we have an hour long COVID-19 call with the 16 presidents and it and is and it is at that time that we get updates and share information and determine uh, what we're going to do going forward. Uh, I know this was a lengthy report, but I wanted to show you the, the comprehensive approach that we've taken over the last three months in preparing our colleges uh, for the COVID-19 virus and how we've addressed that. And I, at this time, Chair Henson, uh, we're open for any questions that you may have. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Box, and to all your team, your cabinet, everybody who's worked to pull this information together. Um, I, I appreciated the questions that people developed and just the way that you thoughtfully and strategically answered all of them. And we've really had to reinvent the system in the past three months for this pivotal response. Um, I was just as a faculty member impressed that 10,000 classes had to move online like in the middle of the semester. So I know that the faculty development and the instructional design mentors, that was very, very impressive. Um, and the, the amount of work you've had to do to keep all the colleges have done to keep the buildings clean, that's, that's a huge expense. Um, and helping people to work remotely and study remotely with the internet availability and letting people have the computers. That's, that's kind of what we do. And um, as I think it was Jonathan in your comments, you found out through your research just how much concern there was about food, housing, domestic violence, uh, people not feeling safe. I think all the, all the services, every all the response has been exemplary and thank you. Um, what questions do people have for Dr. Box or his team? Let's see, uh, Regent Damaris. Thank you, Chair Henson, and thank you, um, Dr. Box and the entire staff for this excellent report. I had just one question, and it is for uh, General Counsel Mike Murray. Uh, as we look at um, exposures, and I've got experience in my past having worked for over a decade with teachers, um, trying to move them from in-class instruction to online and technology-based instruction, it can be difficult. And I appreciate all the resources that have been made available to teachers. My question is, however, are there any concerns from your perspective about um, uh, contract violations or uh, KCTCS's inability to provide adequate support to teachers as they transition to this very different way of uh, helping their students learn. Thank you, Regent Damaris. Um, there are always concerns from, from the legal office, and we're always concerned about that. Um, what we have found is that most of our faculty have been very, very willing and quite eager to make transitions in order to serve the students. We really haven't had any issues um, thus far about people not wanting to do things. 
we've had some concerns about how things should be accomplished and supervisors uh, administration folks are very very willing to engage in that interactive dialogue that is necessary to make sure that we're getting people where they need to be and with the safety precautions that need to happen um, we have had discussions about contract implications um, and certainly with contracts um, any any provision or any agreement can be renegotiated and what we've found so far is that people are very willing to engage in those conversations as well to do what we need to do in order to meet the needs of the students in the communities that we're serving. So, so far, uh, no issues, but we are monitoring for them. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Other questions? Ah, okay. Um, I do want to draw attention to the uh, boot camps that the techno technology um, solutions and the academic solutions have had to train faculty. I, I know for people who have, are in traditional teaching lecture mode, sometimes they go kicking and screaming into that um, mode, but the, the support with the boot camps um, have been really important. I know we've had mandatory boot camps where I teach and um, some of the people who've been teaching a long time said, I don't want to do that, but they they have to to meet the students where they are. So um, I know they've been trying with that. Who else has one? Angela. You're on mute. Thank you. Um, my question is for Mike Murray also. Are, are there going to be allowances for faculty and staff that are in high risk groups to continue to work remotely if they need to? Thank you, Regent Rose. Uh, yeah, we are always watching out for that because this is a novel situation here. We don't really understand everything about the coronavirus and what we are seeing from local health authorities and from the governor's office is giving us direction that we ought to be willing to make um, accommodations for those employees that are in high risk groups. Uh, as well as employees who may have disabilities that we need to accommodate. So all of the presidents, all of the administration officials are very, very aware and concerned about keeping people safe and they are very willing to make accommodations that, uh, that will address high risk issues. Ch Chancellor Williams, you may want to uh, comment on that also. Thank you, Dr. Box. So, uh, Dr. Fultz, we have been, you, you know, working with each college to look at the individual situation. And uh, I think each college is probably addressing it a little bit differently through its own faculty senate and rules. But the goal is that everybody needs to be safe. There are going to have to maybe be some accommodations in terms even of load. So if a faculty member would normally come in for one class face-to-face yeah, -face in the fall, for example, and then uh, maybe that class could be moved to spring to give a longer time period. I think there are lots of ways to manage through load and through offerings, uh, but, but each college does need to be cognizant of the concerns of both its students and its faculty. And so I think a mix of offerings hopefully will help address that, particularly for students, but that faculty will also be able to meet their health needs as well. Um, for staff, the same thing. There are ways to move people around in terms of offices or, you know, um, how they interact with the public or whether they serve virtually. So I think um, the HR directors and the leadership at each college have been working very carefully to address those concerns. Thank you. Angela, does that answer? I know you've got a staff, a faculty member that's got cancer. We've got a lot of older people in our faculty who have high risk like respiratory and things do you do you feel like that your question's been answered there yes thank you for uh, allowing me to ask that question thank you what other questions do we have well thank you again uh to all this the staff cabinet um all the efforts that you've taken throughout the system and within the system um and I guess that 
concludes this portion um, of our meeting. I'd like to propose that we take a break, maybe five minutes. And um, is that okay? Okay. Yes, thank you.
7.28 a.m. Uh, Damon Allen. He's not with us. Lisa Damaris. Present. Thank you. Karen Bonin. I'm here. Wendy Fletcher. Present. Angela Fultz. Here. Chris Gardler. Chris, are you on? Here. Thank you. John McDermott. Here. Rhonda Rose. Here. Marsha Roth. Here. James Lee Stevens. Here. Tammy Thompson. Here. Mark Wells. Here. Cher Henson. Here. Good. You skipped Good. me and I'm here. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jackie. Jackie's That's on okay. as well. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. So uh, now we're going to turn to the consent agenda. I'd like to ask if there are any changes to the consent agenda. Okay, if there are no changes, I declare the agenda approved by unanimous consent. Okay, our next um, discussion will be the executive committee. I would like to ask for Vice Chair Lisa Demers to make the committee report. Thank you, Chair Hansen. Yesterday, the executive committee met uh, beginning on time at 10 a.m. After approval of consent agenda items, the committee received an informational update from Vice President Bowen Muller regarding a recommendation to update board policy 7.4, recognition of independent foundations. Vice President Muller noted that all foundations are currently out of compliance with this policy as written and that the policy has not been revised since 2005. The proposed policy revisions align with industry best practices and simplify the policy to the most critical elements to protect the interests of KCTCS. In addition, the proposed policy helps to facilitate a consistent standard of professionalism, ethics, confidentiality, accountability, and donor expectations. The policy has been vetted and recommended by the presidents of each of the colleges, their chief advancement officers, and the KCTCS general counsel. Vice President Mueller also noted there is a high level of support from the foundations in place today for these revisions. He estimates that with the board's approval of the new policy today, implementation across all colleges and the system should be completed by the end of this calendar year. When asked about how this policy change dovetails with the recent adoption of KCTCS Comprehensive Code of Ethics for Philanthropy, Vice President Mueller noted that the policy change would require that all foundations adopt that same nationally recognized Comprehensive Code of Ethics. When asked about the lack of foundations for Madisonville and Elizabethtown Community Colleges, Vice President Mueller explained that there are opportunities for those colleges to have a seat on the KCTCS System Foundation to effectuate a vehicle for donations to their colleges. And if this is not an acceptable option, they can alternatively create their own foundations, which will be subject to the new policy. Regent Damaris noted that the policy is 15 years old, as are many other board policies, and that the board should look closely at all board policies in the near future for updates and revisions as part of good governance. The meeting then moved on to discussion and a presentation by Dr. Box of his annual performance review. Chair Henson described the process by which she asked regents to provide input to the president's evaluation, including the detailed timeline of events from May 15th to present. President Box then highlighted his accomplishments for the recent academic year, and he did this by goal. Goal one, prominence. President Box noted his participation in multiple interviews, an interview by KET on 9-11, 2019 to promote KCTCS, participation in an interview by the Kentucky Chamber on January 14th of 2020, and participation in a Facebook Live meeting of the Pritchard Committee on 3-26-20. He also discussed his participation in President Trump's AWPAB Committee and noted that the final report of the committee is to be presented to the President very soon. In that report, KCTCS 
will be showcased in the marketing materials as part of the outcomes of the committee's work and that President Trump has asked the committee to continue its work for another year. Dr. Box also noted that KCTCS has received national recognition for several actions, including the signing of the Comprehensive Code of Ethics for Philanthropy, Walnut Hub Top 10 Colleges Recognition, Aspen Institute Top 150 Colleges Recognition for three of the 16 colleges, and noting that Western Kentucky Community and Technical College has received recognition within the fast, past five years several times. Dr. Box noted his work with the colleges to expand focusing of apprenticeship programs in addition to adding a dedicated staff member at each college to focus attention on these efforts. In reference to Grow 2 growth, Dr. Box recognized the excellent work done by the Centralized Processing Center as they continue to work with students to manage education funding debt. He also noted his work to ensure shorter timeframes for students to earn their degrees, specifically mentioning continued increases in the participation in the dual credit program, the new Blackboard out Enrollment Outreach Program, aimed at getting more adults of age 25 plus into KCTCS colleges and the Veterans, the Veterans Accelerated Learning Program, a program aimed at awarding credits to veterans for their job experiences. Dr. Box then highlighted the successes associated with the Entrepreneurial Innovation Grant Program he began two years ago. This program incentivizes colleges to help students overcome obstacles to gaining or continuing their education. In years one and two, Dr. Box authorized $750,000 in funding for the program. However, after receiving feedback from college presidents, he has decided to increase that funding going forward to $900,000. He also mentioned that Harvard University has recently recognized Hazard Community and Technical College's Tuesday Night Live program, a winner from year one of the program, by organizing a research team to study the Tuesday Night Live program and its potential for use as a national model. For goal three, sustainability, Dr. Box discussed his advocacy for reinvestment in education by the General Assembly. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, however, much of the items Dr. Box had lobbied for were tabled. However, the dual credit program did receive approval, increasing reimbursement from 33% to 40% resulting in an additional $2.5 million in revenue to KCTCS per year. Dr. Box also noted that due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the need to redirect efforts of staff to address the pandemic's needs, he asked Vice President Moeller to put on hold private donor solicitation efforts and to continue to focus solely on strategic direction work to revamp the entire philanthropy process. However, Dr. Box did note that grant funding has come in strong this year and that three recent grants not included in his most recent written report have resulted in approximately $850,000 in additional funding. Following Dr. Box's update, Chair Henson reviewed components of her written performance appraisal report, noting the quick response of the internet to Wi-Fi efforts to help students, the increase in funding for the dual credit program, and the increase in board specific donation participation from 14 to 64%. She also noted the challenges the next president will need to face with regard to relationship building, the Kentucky pension issues, KCTCS alternative revenue sources, and continued improvements in student services. After receiving these reports, the committee took a vote regarding the annual performance review. Okay. Um, thank you for presenting the report. Did you want to move that we approve the right. and uh, in my little makeshift office here, I'm trying to find my, here we are. 
Bear with me a second. And so I would like to make a motion that the KCTCS Board of Regents approve the 2019-2020 Annual Evaluation of President Box. Or I'm sorry, Chair uh, Henson, ask you to make such motion. <laughs> Okay, are there any, um, because it comes from committee, that motion does not need a second. Um, so we've heard the motion that the KCTCS Board of Regents approve the 2019-2020 annual evaluation. Are there any questions or further discussion? Okay, I'd like to call for the vote. Uh, Mr. Murray, would you please proceed with the roll call? Thank you, Chair Henson. Uh, at this point, I will remind folks that if you are not a voting regent, to please uh, turn off your camera and your microphone. Uh, all folks uh, should turn off microphones when you are not speaking. And regents, prior to casting your votes, I would ask that you announce your name and then your vote so we can give a little bit of time for the camera to catch up to you. Uh, and then when your vote is given that it will be on camera so we can see and hear you. Um, again, raise hand is not appropriate for the vote, but it is if you'd like to be recognized and I'll be assisting, I'll, I'll tally the vote and announce the result at the end. That said, I will proceed. Regent Allen, not present. Regent Damaris. Yes. Regent Finan? Regent Finan, yes. Regent Fletcher? Regent Fletcher, yes. Regent Fletcher, one more time, please. Regent Fletcher, yes. Regent Foltz? Regent Foltz, yes. Regent Girdler? Girdler, aye. Regent McDermott. Regent McDermott, yes. Regent Rose. Regent Rose, yes. Regent Roth. Regent Roth, yes. Regent Stevens. Regent Stevens, yes. Regent Stevens, one more time, please. Regent Stevens, yes. Thank you, sir. Regent Tehan. Regent Tehan, yes. Regent Thompson. Regent Thompson, yes. Regent Thompson, one more time, please. Regent Thompson, yes. Can you see me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> Regent Wells. Regent Wells, yes. Chair Henson? Chair Henson, yes. Madam Chair, the motion carries. Thank you. And thank you to all uh, for your comments um, and your report. And uh, we celebrate Dr. Box. This has been an amazing year. It's been four years in one, so we appreciate your good work. Okay, now we're going to move to the Finance and Technology and Human Resources Committee. Uh, Chair Mark Wells, would you please make the committee report? Thank you, Chair Henson. Uh, the first item that we dealt with yesterday was the ratification of the personnel actions, which we just took care of a few minutes ago with the consent agenda. So the first item that I'll mention is the action, the action item, the 2020 through 21 KCTCS tuition uh, change this year, which we are, as we talked about yesterday, CPE <clears throat> did not really put a ceiling on the amount of tuition that we could charge. But CPE staff recommended to their board that we keep the increase at no more than $5 per student credit hour. And that's what we did that we raised the tuition five dollars or we're proposing to raise the tuition five dollars per student credit hour which would result in somewhere around six million dollars in total revenue now for an individual student that was taking 15 hours this would means a 
an additional charge per semester of $75. And we did mention yesterday that after financial aid and so on, that this students generally have a residual amount left over of $1,884. So $75 does not seem that steep. Even though we do realize that not all students do get financial aid. We probably would have preferred not to have done this, but with the looking at a possible reduction in state appropriations as also and also looking at how our enrollment right now is looking. Uh, it just seemed like that we needed to probably put in a safety net. Of the $5 tuition increase and I think some schools, as I said yesterday, uh, have really counted on this in their budget because their budgets are so tight. And it's still, though, even with that, it's by far the best deal on higher education in Kentucky. So in recognition of that, on behalf of the Finance, Technology and Human Resources Committee, I move that the KCCC Board of Regents approve and report to the Council on Post-Secondary Education a $5 per student credit hour tuition increase recommended by CPE staff to the CPE Board for 2020-21 for in-state students. This action aligns with the CPE's tuition rate structure at Kentucky's public post-secondary education institutions for 2020-21. The result will be the following 2020-21 per, per credit hour tuition rates for KCTCS colleges. In-state students, $179 per credit hour. Out-of-state students from contiguous counties, $358 per credit hour. And other out-of-state students, $627 per credit hour. Thank you, Chair Wells. Are there any other um, questions or further discussion? Okay. Hearing none, I'd like to call for the vote. Mr. Murray, would you please um, proceed with the roll call? Thank you, Chair Henson. Once again, uh, please state your name and then your vote. And all others will turn off microphones and video at this time. Regent Allen. Regent Damaris. Regent Desmaris, no. Regent Finan. Regent Finan, yes. Sorry, Regent Finan, one more time, please. The camera didn't catch oh. it. Regent Finan, yes. Thank you. Regent Fletcher. Regent Fletcher, yes. I'm sorry, Regent Fletcher, one more time. We got you on camera now. Regent Fletcher. Regent, Regent Fletcher, yes. Thank you. Regent Fultz. Regent Fultz, yes. I'm sorry, Regent Fultz, one more time, please. Regent Fultz. Regent Fultz, yes. Thank you. Regent Girdler. Girdler, no. Regent McDermott. Regent McDermott, yes. Regent Rose. Regent Rose, yes. Regent Roth. Regent Roth, yes. I'm sorry, Regent Roth, one more time, please. Can you see me yet? I can see you. Okay, Regent Roth, yes. <sighs> Thank you, Regent Roth. Regent Stevens. Regent Stevens. Regent Stevens, yes. One more time, Regent Stevens. Regent Stevens, yes. Thank you, sir. Regent Tehan. Regent Tehan, yes. One more time, Regent Tehan. Regent Tehan, yes. Thank you. Regent Thompson. Regent Thompson. Sorry. Regent Thompson? Yes. One more time, please. I just have your 
uh, your initials, not your image. Okay, my camera is on. Can you see me now? I cannot. Okay. We, we can. You can we see can. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Regent. I, I got you now. <laughs> Regent Thompson. Yes. Thank you. Regent Wells. Regent Wells. Yes. Chair Henson. Chair Henson. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Motion carries. Okay, the next item was our 2020 through 21 KCPCS salary schedule. And there is no change in the salary schedule for the 2020 through 21 year. Uh, the, the salary schedule was last revised at our June 9, 2017 meeting, and it covers faculty assignments from uh, 10 to 12 month faculty and staff assignments from anywhere from nine to 12 months. And of course we had hoped to uh, be using this to work on our salary compression adjustment, but with COVID-19 uh, that has gone away at least for this year. So I would like to make a motion on behalf of the Finance Technology and Human Resources Committee that the KCTCS Board of Regents approve the 2020 through 21 KCTCS salary schedule which includes salary ranges for regular full-time faculty and staff. The KCTCS Board of Regents must approve funding for the salary schedule within the KCTCS annual budget. Are there any questions or further discussion? Hearing none, I'd like to call for the vote. Mr. Murray, would you please proceed with roll call? Yes, ma'am, my pleasure. Uh, at this point, um, I'm advised that there is a two second lag before the video shows up. So our tech guru has suggested that all uh, regions turn your cameras on at this point. Everybody else, turn your cameras and video uh, cameras and microphones off. So I will proceed. Regent Allen, not present. Regent Damaris. Yeah. <coughs> Regent Damaris, yes. <coughs> Regent Finan. Regent Finan, yes. One more time, Regent Finan. Regent Finan, yes. Regent Fletcher. Regent Fletcher, yes. One more time. Regent Fletcher, yes. Thank you, ma'am. Regent Fultz. Regent Fultz, yes. Okay, I didn't catch your image at all that time. Regent Fultz. Regent Fultz, yes. Gotcha. Regent Girdler. Girdler, aye. Thank you, sir. Regent McDermott. McDermott. Regent McDermott, yes. One more time, Regent McDermott. Uh, Regent McDermott, yes. Thank you, sir. Regent Rose. Regent Rose, yes. One more time, Regent Rose. Regent Rose, yes. Got them. Thank you, Regent Roth. Can you see me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Regent Roth, yes. Regent Stevens. Regent Stevens. Regent Stevens, yes. One more time, sir, Regent Stevens. Regent Stevens, yes. Gotcha, thank you, sir. Regent Tehan. Maybe Regent. just call your name and give it a second. Okay. Can you see me? Not yet. Speak some more if you would. Okay. Can you see me now? <laughs> I do not have you in visual. Okay. <laughs> Can anybody see me? No. Okay. You're coming. You're coming. 
There you go. <laughs> okay, Regent Tehan, yes. Thank you, ma'am. Regent Thompson, maybe call your name and give it a moment. Regent Thompson, Regent Thompson, yes. Thank you very much, Regent Thompson. Regent Wells? Regent Wells, yes. Thank you, sir. Chair Henson? Chair Henson, yes. One more time, Madam Chair. Chair Henson, yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. All for bearing with me. The motion carries unanimously. Okay, the next item is our is an action item again, a 2020-21 ACPCS annual budget. And as we noted yesterday that COVID-19 has had a major impact on the development of the 2021 ACPCS budget. We've had increased costs and will continue to have increased costs associated with COVID-19, such as increased expenditures to support the instruction, technology, and student support services of more online and hybrid classes. This year, our coming year, our, our operating budget totals $907,922,900. Now, this budget will fund our fixed cost increases in utilities, property and casualty insurance, and facility operating costs. It also will help to fund fixed cost increases in current employee benefit programs. It will fund the cost of our faculty promotions. It also maintains a non-recurring budget reserve for each college with system-wide operations and support of emergency medical services and the Kentucky Board of Emergency Medical Services. It also provides limited safeguards against a potential state appropriation reduction and enrollment declines through the strategic uses of prior year operating fund balances and reserves. It also helps provide KCTCS and our individual colleges with the needed flexibility given the available resources should a state appropriation reduction and or enrollment decline occur. It's a budget I think where Wendell and company have thrown everything, I think, into the pot here trying to get us through this year and not have to do any cutting of programs, services, or especially our employees. And that's the way this budget has been developed. And I, you know, you know, kind of kudos, I think, to Dr. Box and Vice President Followell, and again, the college presidents and budget officers, and really all the faculty and staff, everybody for, you know, doing everything they can to make this work this year for the students. And that's what we're trying to do with this budget. Just keep keep us going and keep everything running and, for, and so we can do the services stuff we need for our students. So on behalf of the Finance, Technology and Human Resources Committee, I move that the KCCS Board of Regents adopt the 2020 through 21 budget resolution regarding the 2020 through 21 annual budget for the Kentucky Community and Technical College System. This budget and its provisions will be effective July 1, 2020 through June 30th of 2021. Thank you, uh, Chair Wells. Um, are there any questions or further discussion? Okay. Uh, I'd like to call for the vote, Mr. Murray. Thank you, Madam Chair. Dan, uh, it appears we need to adapt to the technology limitations. So if you would call your name first and then just wait a moment and then call again and state your vote, I think that'll help us. So let me start with Regent Allen. Regent Damaris. Regent Damaris. Mr. Murray, Regent sorry Damaris. about that. It's on yeah. mute. Okay, we'll come back. Regent Damaris? Regent Damaris, yes. One more time, please. Regent Damaris, yes. Thank you. Regent Allen? Uh, good morning, Regent Allen, yes. One more time, sir. Regent Allen, yes. Thank you. Regent Finan? Regent Finan, yes. One more time, I got you on video now. 
Regent Finan, yes. Thank you. Regent Fletcher. Regent Fletcher. Yes. Okay, I did not see you. Regent Fletcher. Regent Fletcher, yes. Okay, a third time's the charm. I got you now. <laughs> Regent Fletcher, yes. Thank you, ma'am. Regent Fultz. Regent Fultz, yes. One more Regent time. Fultz. I have your image, but not your actual picture. Regent Fultz, yes. <laughs> gotcha. Regent Gertler. Gertler. Aye. I have your initials, Regent Gertler, but not your image. Not your your face. One more time, please. Gertler. Aye. Okay, can Gertler? I can you all see Regent Gertler? Yes. 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 <laughs> okay, I got you now. <laughs> Regent Gertler, one more time, please. No problem whatsoever. You're doing great, Mike. Gertler, I gotcha. Thank you, sir. Regent McDermott. This is Regent Jonathan McDermott. He's yes. Good. Did I show up? I cannot see you. I only see your initials. <laughs> Excellent. Hello, this is Jonathan McDermott. Can you see me now? I cannot. Can anyone else see me? Yes. 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 I think yes. you may be on your end, Mike. Uh, okay. uh, now I got your Regent McDermott. Oh, perfect. Regent McDermott, yes. Thank you, sir. Regent Rose. Regent Rose, yes. Thank you. Regent Roth. Regent Roth, yes, no. I mean, can you see me? I see you. The answer is yes. <laughs> Thank you. Regent Stevens. Regent Stevens, yes. One more time, sir. Regent Stevens, yes. Thank you. Regent Tehan. Regent Tehan, yes. One more time, Regent Tehan. Regent Tehan, yes. Gotcha. Thank you, ma'am. Regent Thompson. This is Regent Tammy Thompson. Regent Tammy Thompson, yes. Thank you. Regent Wells? Regent Mark Wells, yes. One more time, sir. Okay. Regent Wells, yes. Thank you. Chair Henson? Chair Henson, yes. Thank you. Madam Chair, the motion carries. Next, Thank okay. you. Next item on the agenda was the update on the administrative services report, which includes the ACCS quarterly financial report, also the facilities management and sustainability status report. Looking at our quarterly financial report first, this is as of, of course, March 31st. When we look at the revenues, you see that your revenues basically are coming in at a normal percentage as compared to the previous years. As we get our revenues, you know, tend to a little earlier in the year and our expenditures then pick up all through the year until the end of the year. Uh, when you look at the revenues, the only thing that may jump out at you up there first is investment income, which, you know, last year on 18, 19 year, we budgeted lower and had a really, really good year, which is why you see the 308%, even though we have actually, you know, collected realized to date more this year, we're at 128% of what we expected. 
So our total revenues and appropriated fund balances are $741,578,000. On our expenditures by program, these again, if when we look down through there and we're checking percentages, they are very much in line with previous years. But again, like I said, you see they are a little lower, 67, 77, 71% and so on, because again, we're having expenditures all throughout the year while the revenue, most of it has already come in. Our total expenditures and budget reserve there, $602,372,000. So we had appropriated revenues and in excess of expenditures as of March 31st of $139,206,000. On our statement of net position, it's March 31st. We see the first of all, starting out in the assets, one good thing that's there is the cash and cash equivalents with the current condition that we're in with COVID-19. We have $300,807,000 in cash and cash equivalents, up approximately $36 million from the previous year. As we look, the total assets and our total deferred outflows there, we have $1,314,750,000. On our liabilities, uh, nothing really surprising there. And again, our net pension liability, as, as you see there, is down from what it was because, again, we have more and more people retiring out of the pension systems. We had a total liabilities and deferred inflows of 686042000 So at the end there, our total net position is a very solid 628708000 which is up approximately from the previous year around $79 million. Any questions on that before moving on to the next little part of this report? Okay. The facility support services update. We have in this in this particular report the capital projects, our facility support services, our sustainability initiatives, and facility utilization. And the first thing we come to is our capital projects, and in particular talking about the Kentucky Work Ready Skills Initiative Awards. And, and through this, we just briefly went through this yesterday, some of the projects that are ongoing here, Danville Advanced Manufacturing Center, uh, the laundry building renovation expansion at Bluegrass Community and Technical College, the fire commission parking lot in Greenville. And you may remember we uh, just, we increased the scope of that project a meeting or two ago up to 3 million. Uh, the training lab addition and renovation at Hopkinsville Community College and the uh, Advanced Manufacturing and Information Technology Center at Jefferson. And that's the one that has been pointed out that when we went on our walking tour of Jefferson last year downtown, we saw that building. And I actually, I'm, I kind of want to get down and see that building again now that it's completed or, or on the verge of being completed. Uh, the facility support services. We have some properties, acquisitions, and dispositions, and you see quite a few there, and mostly involving Hazard yeah. Community and Technical College, where they are disposing of some buildings and land and so on, selling those. We have sold approximately $122,987 of surplus property on governmentdeals.com. Uh, we have submitted yeah. our buildings and insurance contents updates for the system to the Division of State Risk and Insurance Services. We've also obtained active shooter and violent event insurance coverage, which I think everybody probably feels is a good thing that we've done that. Uh, talk about preparations for reopening colleges. I think we covered that pretty much this morning. Dr. Boxing. So that takes care of that part of the report. Uh, the green is sustainability update. And we know we're always trying to do things that have initiatives that you know, give us more sustainability on our assets and so on. And just a couple or three examples of some things going on around the system. We have been using 3D printers to create face shields to assist frontline COVID-19 workers, a very good thing. And again, like I said, uh, we do for the students that are, you know, I guess desperately in need, we've been having food pantries. And I know even at my college, you know, we have something called the nest where they, students can come and get food if they need they can get clothing household items uh if they're we will try to get them a suit and stuff if they're, if they're trying to go for an interview and things like that so you're seeing those spring up all around the system 
We've been collaborating with communities on sustainability initiatives such as sustainable yeah. landscaping, tree planting, and recycling. And one that I thought was kind of kind of neat here, the implementing sustainability focused or sustainability related courses and pathways, including introduction to sustainability and hydroponics, like Madisonville Community College's hydroponic greenhouse. The greenhouse provides vegetables that are used in the Muhlenberg County High School cafeteria. And I think that's a, that's a pretty neat little initiative right there. Uh, the final part of this little section is the uh, our space and enrollment efficiency snapshot for the last five years and in this report you'll note that the standard scheduling week for kctcs is 60 hours based on a 12-hour day from 8 a.m to 8 p.m monday through friday and then what we consider the prime time scheduling work week is 25 hours from 9 to 2 monday through friday and on the report you can see that really the uh Total number of rooms used has been pretty steady over the last five years. Our uh, overall utilization of rooms, which in the fall of 2015 was 27%, has come down to 24%. I think a lot of that, again, is still more online classes as we go along, and you're probably likely to see more in the future. Also, more dual credit classes that we are teaching. Probably is having an effect on the classroom utilization. Uh, during our prime time during the day, again, we have seen from fall 2015 and up through fall 18 being very consistent around 63, 64%, but it did fall down to 55% in fall 2019. That is in line with the national averages, which I believe came in there at 59%. So we're very much in line with what's going on nationally. The final thing that we looked at yesterday, and I'll have to get this one back up on my screen again because it's gone off, is the Institutional Advancement Report. And in that report, the first thing we talked about was the private gift income to KCTCS, which we see coming in at around $5,833,000. <clears> and we talked about that possibly having a COVID-19 having a small effect on that. But the real good news, and I, well, I'll mention a couple of the gifts there in that, that these are all at Jefferson Community and Technical College, the James Graham, Graham Brown Foundation gave $1 million to Jefferson. The Henry Huser made pledge $500,000 to Jefferson. The J.P. Morgan Chase Foundation made a gift of $275,000 to Jefferson. And the Lumina Foundation with a gift of $175,000. At Hopkinsville Community College, the Rotary Club, made a gift of $192,000. In Maysville, the estate of Aveline Allison provided a gift of almost $160,000. And Cincinnati Bell has made, made a $150,000 final pledge payment to the system offices for the technology, techno, technological media history while that is in the system office and that looks so good. On our sponsored gifts, project or our sponsored projects grants and contracts report we did note yesterday that this is up you know significantly we are showing total awards of 86 around a little over 86 million dollars and that we were told is up somewhere around 30 million dollars so good work by vice president moeller and, and the uh, individuals out in the colleges working in this area but again the big things that we've received there kctcs you know around the six $16,724,000 from the Higher Education Emergency Relief Funds, which you know, affects all KCTCS colleges, and that's for student aid, and $7,641,000 in Higher Education Emergency Relief Funds for the institutional portion of that, and another one, $128,000 Somerset Community and Technical College from the Department of Agriculture. And that pretty much concludes my report for today. Okay, thank you very much. Um, sorry if there's a paper. Um, are there any questions or further discussion? Okay, um, that concludes this part of the uh, meeting. Why don't we take another five minute break? Um, 
before we go to the Academic Affairs Committee. So we'll, for the people who are on YouTube, we're gonna take a five minute break and then we'll come back.
I see James Lee. That's all I can see. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Hannah, would you call the roll again, please, just to make sure we're all here? Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, we are coming back after a break. It's 11.20 a.m. And I will uh, proceed with the roll call. Damon Allen. Present. Thank you. Lisa Damaris. Present. Aaron Bonin. Here. Wendy Fletcher. Present. Angela Fultz. Present. Chris Gardler. Here. John McDermott. Here. Rhonda Rose. Here. Marsha Roth. Here. James Lee Stevens. Present. Jackie Tehan. Here. Tammy Thompson. Here. Mark Wells. Mark, are you with us? He's muted. He might be not back yet. Okay. Mark. Okay, I'm not seeing Mark, uh, but Gail Henson, you're here. And so everyone with the exception of Mark Wells is back online. Okay. So if the group doesn't mind just taking maybe even maybe a three minute break and then we can continue uh, yes. so that we can end at uh, 12. Yeah, it's 10. It's at 11.21, so let's reconvene in three minutes, 10.24. Okay. Okay. I think we're getting some other feedback. I think so we're true. getting some interference. <laughs> that wasn't our meeting, was it? No. No, no it was not. That Except was an I NKU meeting. Actually, my apologies. Uh, that was me checking in with my online class. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Multitasking. Cool. It'll get you every time, Damon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hope you've learned a lot from your banking seminar. I am. <laughs> okay, thank you. Sorry, I was waiting for some bad images to pop up right there. So <laughs> glad that was that's all that was. Um, okay, is Mark Wells back on now? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Everyone's here. We can proceed. Right. Uh, Thank you. I would like to ask committee chair James Lee Stevens to make the committee report for the academic affairs and curriculum committee. Thank you, Madam Chairman. First of all, I would like to pay a special thanks to uh, Dr. Williams and Dr. McCall for their splendid work. And during this panic Cordoba time is uh, they have done an excellent job. The first item we're going to talk about is, as you know, in the board practice to honor a regent who, who is receiving their credentials this term. Regent McDermott are required, uh, has completed the following certifications. Uh, computer technology, CIT fundamentals, security plus prep A, prep plus computer technology based on awards and system rank. Regent McDermott will also complete the requirement for the Associate of Applied Degree uh, during the fall semester of 2020. That being said, Madam Chairman, the curriculum committee recommends that uh, we awarding of the computer technology, CIT, fundamentals, security, and prep A to uh, Mr. Jonathan McDermott, South Central Kentucky Community College, as presented by the supplement booklet, KCTC is candidate of credentials with the credentials to be awarded Mr. Dermott on the certification and, and the respective requirements that have been satisfactorily completed. Mr. McDermott will be complete the requirements for an associate applied degree in the fall term of 2020. Madam Chairman. Thank you. Are there any questions or further discussion? We're so proud of you, John, for this. I'd like to call for the vote. Mr. Murray, please proceed with the roll call. Thank you, Madam Chair. Regent Allen? 
Yes, can you see and hear me? See you perfectly. All right, so yes, I would vote yes. Thank you. Regent Damaris? Regent Damaris, yes. Regent Finan? Regent Finan, yes. Thank you. Regent Fletcher? Can you see me, Mike? Yeah, I can see. Okay. Regent Fletcher, yes. Thank you. Regent Foles. I see you, but I don't hear you. Thank you, Regent Foles, yes. Thank you, ma'am. Regent Girdler. Regent Girdler, aye. Thank you, sir. Regent McDermott. Regent McDermott, yes. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Regent Rose. Regent Rose, yes. Regent Rose, one more time, please. Regent Rose, yes. Thank you. Regent Roth. I see you, but you're muted, Regent Roth. You know what? A lot of people have tried to mute me unsuccessfully. <laughs> <laughs> Regent Roth, yes, with 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 exclamation points. Thank you, ma'am. Regent Stevens. Regent Stevens, yes. Thank you, sir. Regent Tehan. Regent Tehan, yes. That's it. Thank you, Regent Thompson. Regent Thompson, yes. Thank you. Regent Wells. Regent Wells. Yes. Go in there. Corner closet. Actually, you should put Marley on her line first. She's waiting. Look at me. The corner cabinet where the bin of the basketball snacks are. On the right side. Damon. Chair Henson. Uh, Chair Henson, yes. That wasn't me that time. <laughs> One more time, Chair Henson. Chair Henson, yes. Thank you. Madam Chair, the motion carries. Yeah, congratulations, Jonathan. Thank you one. all so very much. All right. Next item, Madam Chairman, you ready for it? The next item are new proposals and that the proposal is the Board of Regents approve an associate in Applied Science AAS in the Medical Laboratory Technology for Elizabethtown Community College. And some of the criteria is that the uh, program will be implemented in the spring of 2021. The closest uh, institution to this is Jefferson Community College, which is approximately 45 miles away. There are many applications for this in the area. They have, have an agreement with Hardin County Health Department as well as the Hardin County Hospital, which is now a Baptist Hospital. The program cost will be built into the general operating budget. In addition, the feedback and demand has been very great. So Madam Chairman, with that is that I recommend the KCC Board of Regents approve an associate applied Science as in the Medical Laboratory Technology for Elizabethtown Community College beginning in the spring of 2021. Are there any questions or further discussion? Hearing none, I'd like to call for the vote. Mr. Murray, would you please proceed? Thank you, Madam Chair. We're getting better at this, so here we go. Regent Allen. Regent Allen votes yes. Thank you. Regent Damaris. Regent Damaris, yes. Thank you. Regent Finan. Regent Finan, yes. <clears throat> Regent Fletcher. Regent Fletcher, yes. Thank you. Regent Fultz. Regent Fultz, yes. 
One more time, Regent Fultz. Regent Fultz, yes. Regent Girdler. Girdler, aye. Thanks, sir. Regent McDermott. This is Regent McDermott. I vote yes. Yes, sir. Regent Rose. Regent Rose, yes. Got it. Regent Roth. Regent Roth, yes. One more time, Regent Roth. Regent Roth. Got me? Gotcha. Yes. Thank you. Regent Stevens. Regent Stevens, yes. Thank you, sir. Regent Tehan. Regent Tehan, yes. Thank you. Uh -huh. Regent Thompson. Regent Thompson, yes. Thank you. Regent Wells. Regent Wells, yes. One more time, Regent Wells. Regent Wells, yes. Thank you. Chair Henson. Chair Henson, yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Carries. Thank you. Madam Chairman, the next uh, uh, item for action is a new program from Madisonville Community College. Uh, it is a fermentation science for Madisonville Community College, which beginning in the fall of 2020. This is with the growing industry of, of craft beer industry on the state. This is the first attempt by any community college in the area to implement this program. The gifts have provided for the lab in the first year. Uh, they have all the grants and planning effectives have been uh, worked out with details. The curriculum uh, has uh, been supported by the uh, Master Brewer Association of America. This is something, this is the first four, not only for Madisonville, but for KCTCS. And uh, Dr. Uh, Williams has said that I can be the first uh, person to try this experiment. experiment. So with that, Madam Chairman, uh, we would recommend that uh, the uh, board uh, approve an associate applied degree in fermentation science for Madisonville Community College to begin in the fall of 2020. Are there any uh, questions or further discussion? This is one of those innovative programs that we really celebrate. Um, great, better living through chemistry. Um, I'd like to call for the vote. Mr. Murray, would you please proceed with the roll call? Yes, ma'am, thank you very much. Regent Allen. Regent Allen, yes. Yeah. Regent Damaris. Regent Damaris, yes. Regent Finan. Regent Finan, yes. One more time, Regent Finan. Regent Finan, yes. Ma'am. Regent Fletcher. Regent Fletcher, yes. Thank you, ma'am. Regent Fultz. Regent Fultz, yes. Thank you. Regent Girdler. Regent Girdler, aye. Thank you, sir. Regent McDermott. This is Regent McDermott, yes. Gotcha. Regent Rose. Regent Rose, yes. Thank you. Regent Roth. Regent Roth. Yes. Thank you. Regent Stevens. Regent Stevens, yes. Thanks, sir. Regent Tehan. Regent Tehan, yes. Thank you. Regent Thompson. Regent Thompson, yes. Thank you. Regent Wells. Regent Wells, yes. Thank you. Chair Henson? Chair Henson, yes. 
Thank you. Madam Chair, the motion carries. Thank you. Madam Chair, the next item is an increase of credit uh, hours, associate applied degree in dental hygienist from Bluegrass Community and Technical School. Right now, the requirement is 68 hours uh, and the new requirement, it will be 72 hours beginning in the fall of 2020. The uh, AAS and dental hygiene program at Bluegrass has a history of providing top quality uh, in, uh, students for this program. The curriculum revision changes are necessary because of lab and clinical hours required. Uh, in addition, uh, an additional accreditation with is required in completion of microbiology. The dental hygiene program is allowing students to complete the requirement with either a three hour or four hour credit. Because of the digital learning requirement and the alternate course hours for microbiology, a credit hour exception is required for AAS. So, Madam Chairman, that the the curriculum committee recommends to the board of of regents that the credit hours be raised from 68 to 72 uh, at Bluegrass Community Technical College be, to be implemented in the fall of 2020. Thank you. Are there any uh, questions or further discussion about this? I'd like to call for the vote. Mr. Murray, would you please proceed with the roll call? Yes, ma'am. Regent Allen. Regent Allen, yes. Thank you. Regent Damaris. Regent Damaris, yes. Regent Finan. Regent Finan, yes. Thank you. Regent Fletcher. Regent Fletcher, yes. Thank you, ma'am. Regent Bolt. Regent Fault, yes. Thank you. Regent Girdler. Regent Girdler, aye. Thank you, sir. Regent McDermott. Regent McDermott, yes. Regent Rose. Regent Rose, yes. Thank you. Regent Roth. Regent Roth, yes. Thank you. Regent Stevens. Regent Stevens, yes. Thank you, sir. Regent Tehan. Regent Tehan, yes. Thank you. Regent Thompson. Regent Thompson, yes. Thank you. Regent Wells. Regent Mark Wells, yes. Gotcha. Thank you, sir. Chair Henson. Chair Henson, yes. Thank you. Madam Chair, the motion carries. Madam Chairman, the uh, next report was given to the committee by Dr. McCall, and it's the student service report. And I would uh, remind the, the board member that that full report is in your package on beginning on page 626, if you would like to read, look through that, I'll cover some of the highlights of her report that she reported to us. The first one was student financial aid, and we've already discussed that, and she made a very good and brief presentation during her uh, report today. Staff workers close to with the college financial aid and directors. The next one is the, is the virtual learning services uh, we moved quickly, and the staff did to that is to go to the platforms to meet all of those requirements. The learning on demand, uh, the academic advisors conducted the, what is called our check-ins with students by email, phone conversation to inquire about their overall health and well-being. They also asked their bay if there was any needs, such as transportation, food, or anything that we could provide additional services for. Next item that, that Dr. McCall cousin was the uh, Blackboard Call Center, and basically is that 90% of those calls that came in, there were over 58,000 calls, 
but uh, basically 90% of those were handled by the call center with approximately 10% being sent on to the local college and additional support. Uh, we had a pr program this year, which is called reverse transfer pilot projects with the University of Kentucky and KCTCS signed a memorandum of agreement with the University of Kentucky for the purpose of awarding associates in art and, associ and associates in science degrees to students who transfer to UK from KCTCS. This partnership produced uh, basically uh, 65 associate degrees with 63 of those coming from the Bluegrass Community and Technical College and two coming from the Owensboro Community and Technical Colleges. Looking ahead for the enrollment, we've already discussed that. Uh, the uh, playbook that we're using includes data planning and scenario systems, thinking about what is going to happen, not only this summer, but by the fall. Uh, the two-way texting messages software and to engage support of students uh, has been very helpful. The initial was to help financial aid, advising, and administration. The uh, data that was provided uh, was very helpful for the uh, colleges as well as the students. Diversity training is to 2018-19 is that basically that uh, that is a requirement and uh, the uh, plans were presented to CPE. 14 of the 16 colleges were automatically e eligible and received uh, their approval. Two colleges uh, are waiting. They have resubmitted their plans, and those are Elizabethtown and Hopkinsville, and those plans had to be in by June the 1st, and Dr. McCall feels very confident that they will get that certification. Uh, the next item was that to the KCTC office services to for the fall of 2019, that to build relationships between the KCTC office and our uh, community college system, offer any support that we can. During the college visit, the systems will provide information on the area of student financial aid, visual uh, student learning, and advising. Madam Chairman, that completes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions or further discussion? All right, thank you very much. So now we'll proceed with our annual officer elections. In order to proceed, I'd like to, to call for the following motion. That motion being that the Board of Regents elect members for the positions of chair, vice chair, and secretary to the board for one year term positions beginning July 1st, 2020 and ending June 30, uh, 2021. Do I have a motion? Regent McDermott, so moved. Regent Finan, second. Okay, I'd like to note that Jonathan McDermott made the motion and Karen Finan seconded. I'd like to call for the vote. Mr. Murray, please proceed. Mike and very well. Um, at this point, we are voting only to open the elections. We are not actually making the officer elections and nominations at this point. So I will call call the vote. Uh, Regent Allen. Regent Allen, yes. Regent Damaris. Regent Damaris, yes. Regent Finan. Regent Finan, yes. Regent Fletcher. Regent Fletcher, yes. Regent Fultz. Regent Fultz, yes. Regent Girdler. Regent Girdler, aye. Yes, sir. Regent McDermott. Regent McDermott, yes. Thank you. Regent Rose. Regent Rose, yes. Thank you. Regent Roth. Regent Roth, yes. One more time. There was a little bit of a lag there. Regent, Regent Roth, yes. Thank you, ma'am. Regent Stevens. 
Regent Stevens, yes. Thank you. Regent Tehan? Regent Tehan, yes. Regent Thompson? Regent Thompson, yes. Regent Wells? Regent Mark Wells, yes. Thank you, sir. Henson. Chair Henson, yes. Thank you, ma'am. Motion carries. We can proceed to the vote. Okay, before we begin, um, it is noted that the terms of the present officers expire June 30th, 2019. Section 2.1 of the KCTCS Board of Regents bylaws specified that the board elected chair, vice chair, and secretary from its membership for a term of one year. Based on statute bylaws and our current election procedures, elections must occur annually. A chair may not serve for more than two consecutive one-year terms, but there is no term limit for vice chair, secretary, and other such officers. We will start for nominations with ch for chair, followed by vice chair, then secretary. Remember that you may nominate someone or you may self-nominate. If nominated by someone, you will need to accept or decline the nomination. Once nominations for the given floor have been made and there are no more, I will close the floor and we'll proceed with floor speeches. Each candidate has two minutes to explain why they would like to be chosen for the position. No supporting documents, rebuttals, or reservations of time will be allowed during floor speeches. The winning candidate shall be determined by simple majority to vo vote to be announced by the parliamentarian. In the event a tie is announced by the parliamentarian, the chair will use the voting regions to vote again by the same method used in the initial vote. All regions appointed and elected are eligible for any position. Relevant experience and time on the board should be given due consideration, but there are no qualifications to be considered. The vice chair is not a chair elect. If a regent is nominated for a position, but is not elected for that position, he or she may be nominated for the next position until all positions have been elected. Mike Murray, parliamentarian, will be conducting roll call, telling votes and announcing the minute winners. Mike, would you please explain for regents how this will be done given our virtual setting? Yes, ma'am, thank you very much. Um, last year, you all as a board of regents uh, agreed to the election of officers procedures, which is located in your board materials, uh, attachment A at page uh, six, uh, 634 of your materials there. And those are the rules by which we will conduct this vote. Um, the actual vote, um, we will need to again, call your name so that the camera focuses on you and then indicate your vote and raise your hand. That way we are covering all the bases provided for in our election procedures. Um, we need to make sure that you are both seen and heard at the time you are making your vote. During the nomination process and the vote process, your focus should be on who you believe will best lead in the offices for which they are nominated, remembering your duty as regents is what is in the best interests of KCTCS, and you may bring your wisdom and judgment of your experience to bear in the process. You can consider input that you have received, but at the end of the day, the judgment should be yours, remembering the oath that you took as regents. Um, as the chair mentioned, the chair will call for nominations in the order of chair, vice chair, and secretary. The region is nominated by another. Uh, that region, that nominee should state immediately thereafter whether he or she accepts the nomination and then we will move to the next. After all the nominations, uh, there should be a motion. We'll move to close the nomination process and then proceed to the vote in the same order, chair, vice chair, and secretary. During the vote, of course, non-voting people should turn off microphones and cameras. Uh, and before casting a vote, again, announce your name and then, then indicate your vote. I, as par parliamentarian, will thereafter tally the votes and announce the results. Are there any questions at this point? 
Okay. okay. All right, I'd like to open the floor for nominations for chair. Madam Chair, this is Regent Finan. Uh -huh. I would like to nominate Lisa Damaris as chair of KCTCS for the coming term. Um, we're in a transitioning time that will require great financial and technical acumen. Lisa has demonstrated this skill along with strong leadership through her time at KCTCS as chair of the finance committee and in the vice chair position. She understands the institution in depth and clearly articulates its complex needs through budget, pension, faculty staff concerns, community outreach, academic excellence. I think coupled with the changing business and health landscape, Lisa can provide the leadership we need with our interim. And as we bring a new president aboard, preserve the building blocks created through Dr. Box and this board, but also look towards the future. I believe her professional background in technology, finance and operations, professional studies, um, prepares her for the important role ahead. And she has overseen major projects, searches, complex work to the benefit of her employers in the community and to this institution. But I think most of all, her passion for the work at hand is extremely impressive and her logical steady approach will guide us through this next transition. So Lisa, you have to accept or decline. Thank you, Regent Finan. I accept the nomination. Okay. Are there other nominations? Yes, Chair Henson. Okay. This is Regent Roth. I don't know whether, I, I can only see the, um, I don't see anybody's picture, just the information about um, nominating committee. Do we need to be seen, Mike? You need to be seen at the time you are making your votes. Great. All right, I would like to, ah, now I can see everybody. Uh, I would like to nominate Chair Henson, Gail Henson. Um, these are turbulent times, worldwide, nationally, and at KCTCS, we are not oblivious to that. But on top of everything else, we're living in a time of change at the top of, this, of the system. Um, I think Gail is the, has shown over the year that she has been chair that she is capable of incredible leadership, a strong hand, a steady voice, a calm demeanor, and the ability to advocate so effectively for the system in the legislature and all throughout the um, system colleges too. Her knowledge of the Commonwealth of Kentucky is extensive. She's traveled greatly so that she comes with an authority, not only as chair of the Board of Regents of KCTCS, but also as a person of integrity and um, just great character. You know, it, it takes the speaking as a past chair, it takes a year to really get this job under your belt. Um, it's much more than just preparing for the quarterly meetings. It's a lot of behind the scenes work. It's a lot of work traveling and speaking to people and representing us as a board. And Gail has done an incredible amount of work behind the scenes that you all don't know about, but that shows up in the success and the ability for Dr. Box to go out and do his job. Gail works behind the scenes to make that job even, um, it, to delineate the difference between the professional at the top of the system and the lay leader at the top of the system. Those are very different positions and it really takes a year to understand that. Um, this is not the time in my opinion to change leadership at the top. Uh, Gail has done an incredible job and deserves to have another year. I accept that, thank you. Are there other nominations? Okay, there being no other nominations, um, I'll close the floor for nominations for chair. Um, we will have two floor speeches. Uh, Lisa will go first. Thank you, 
Madam Chair. And again, thank you, Regent Finan, for the nomination. I know um, that we've talked a lot today about change, and this next year will bring about many changes and many challenges for KCTCS. We'll be ushering in a new president, working through the COVID-19 yeah. teaching and learning environment, and continuing to focus on our due diligence regarding funding for the organization and keeping its mission intact for our students, our faculty, and our staff. I have over 35 years of experience in leading organizations through change with a focus on technology and finance. My background has provided me with decades of teaching, supporting, and collaborating with leaders and participants during times of rapid transformational change. Most of today's meeting has talked about rapid transformational change. And it will not stop. It will continue as we navigate the waters of COVID-19. And it will certainly continue as our current president retires, we navigate a search, and we navigate through a new leader to bring KCTCS into the future. In recent years, I have demonstrated my leadership through city leadership, taking a city from an embezzlement into a new transparent, financially solid government. I've also demonstrated my ability to do this through county leadership, my most recent employee of the last three years, transforming an entire office environment of over 250 folks into a new $30 million building with all new technologies, an entirely new working environment, not much unlike what KCTCS is doing right now in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. I respectfully ask for your vote and would appreciate your support. And I thank all of you for your consideration. Thank you. Um, as I enter my final year to serve on the serve the Commonwealth on the Board of Regents, I do seek to continue to serve as chair of your board and continue the transition. The mission of KCTCS to enhance the quality of life and the employability of citizens of the Commonwealth truly drives my passion and my 45 years in public education to provide accessible, affordable, and strong public education. The Beatles song, The Long and Winding Road, kind of characterizes the theme for the past 11 years I've served and wish to continue to serve. During that time, we have seen and have been part of such actions as securing Senate Bill 1 that guarantees the transfer of KCTCS credits to our post-secondary institutions. The second meeting I attended, we affirmed tenure which is so important to attract and retain quality faculty. Seeing visions take shape from the Build Smart campaign and affirming the promise campaigns and working for the past years and especially this year to develop effective relationship with our legislators, partners at the Council on Post-Secondary Education, ACCT and business leaders. It's been important for, to have been able to show up at a moment's notice in Frankfurt or Versailles to testify at committees and to support KCTCS through presence there and testimony. As a 45-year educator and seasoned administrator, I've been integrally in part, part of the changing nature of the teaching and learning environment uh, and the challenges faced by instructional design and the online learning environment. It's been important to be able to address the barriers to success faced by our students because we have such a unique population and to be part of the faculty development necessary to meet students where they are. As a small business co-owner in Western Kentucky, I've seen the immense impact of the community college for our, our community there. I also see the promise of the KCTCS offers through its wide range of certificate technical and degree options to make dreams come true for individuals and to play a significant role in economic development and rebuilding of our commonwealth, especially at this time when there's so much 
unemployment and racial unrest, we need to be at the table and part of that problem to transform lives. This will be a challenging year with many uncertainties because of the unemployment and because of COVID. It's a time of leadership transition as we have both an interim president coming in and a new president. I seek to be that steady rudder of the board to encourage the interim and to encourage the cabinet to continue to do their work to navigate these uncharted waters. I bring the insight of 11 years history to inform our work, the understanding of the workings of higher education to guide and support our work, and the passionate belief and the promise of KCTCS to lead us this year. So I ask for your vote. Thank you. Okay, Mike, you can proceed with vote. Okay, very well. So I will proceed with the vote, starting with Regent Allen. Please say your name, uh, indicate your vote at that time, and raise your hand. Regent Allen. Perfect. Thank you, Mike. Regent Allen, and I vote for Chairman Henson, Chairwoman Henson, excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. Regent Damaris. Regent Damaris, and I vote for Regent Damaris. Well, thank you. Regent Finan. Regent Finan, my vote goes to Regent Damaris. Thank you. Regent Fletcher. Regent Fletcher, and my vote goes to Regent Damaris. One more time, please. Regent Fletcher, and my vote goes to Regent Damaris. Regent Fultz. Regent Fultz. My vote goes to Regent Damaris. Regent Girdler. Regent Girdler, and my vote goes to Regent Damaris. Thank you, sir. Regent McDermott. Regent McDermott, and my vote goes to Chair Henson. Thank you, sir. Regent Rose. Regent Rose, and my vote goes to Chair Henson. Thank you, ma'am. Regent Roth. Regent Roth, got me? Yes, ma'am. My vote is for Chair Henson. Thank you. Regent Stevens. Regent Stevens, and uh, I'd like to make a comment. Uh, is that appropriate, Mike? You may, briefly. Briefly, thank you. These are difficult times, and both of these ladies I have the utmost respect for, and this is a tough decision for me. But, you know, going forward is I would challenge both of them to reach out to board members and improve the communication. Every board member is important and every board member needs to be included. We need inclusion, not exclusion. So with that is, I vote for uh, Chairman Benson. Hanson, please. Thank you, sir. Regent Tehan. Hold on. Okay, Regent Tehan, and my vote goes for Chair Henson. Thank you. Regent Fultz, did you have a question or issue? No. Okay, sorry, your hand was up. Okay, thank you. Regent Thompson. Regent Thompson, uh, Chairman Henson. Thank you. Regent Wells. Regent Wells, Regent Damaris. Thank you. Chair Henson. Chair Henson, Chair Henson. Thank you.
Okay, well, <laughs> it appears we have tie. One. We have a tie on the first vote. So the election procedures require that we vote for this position. So we will proceed to a re-vote on the position. Uh, Regent Allen. Regent yeah. Allen, I vote for Chair Henson. Regent Damaris. Regent Damaris, I vote for Regent Damaris. Regent Finan. Regent Finan, I vote for Regent Damaris. Regent Fletcher. Regent Fletcher, I vote for Regent Damaris. Regent Fultz. Regent Fultz, I vote for Regent Damaris. Mike, I've gotten a message that you need to read count. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Regent, uh, if your faculty vote to count in. Twice, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Yeah. That was my error. We do not have a tie. We have one, one vote, two votes, three, four, five, six votes for Chair Pinson. One, two, three and a half, four. And a half, five votes for Regent Demerit. So five. Chair Hinton is the victim in the initial vote. Okay. Thank you. Mike. Would you, I'm sorry, this is Hannah, for um, record purposes, would you just read back the votes you have for each candidate and um, please indicate if they have a full vote or a half a vote? Yes, ma'am. Thank uh, you. Damon Allen votes one full vote for Chair Pinson. Regent Damaris votes one full vote for Regent Damaris. Regent Finan has one full vote for Regent Damaris. Regent Fletcher has one full vote for Regent Damaris. Regent Fultz has one half vote for Regent Damaris. Regent Girdler has one full vote for Regent Damaris. Regent McDermott has one half vote for Chair Henson. Regent Rose has one half vote for Chair Henson. Regent Roth has one full vote for Chair Henson. Has one full vote for Chair Henson. Regent Keehan has one half vote for Chair Henson. Regent Thompson has one half vote for Regent Henson, for Chair Henson. Regent Wells has one half vote for Regent Damaris. Regent Chair Henson has one full vote for Chair Henson. Votes in total for Chair Henson and five votes in total for Regent Damaris. 
Do we have a chord on that count? Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, I recognize uh, what this vote means um, and hear you, James Lee, you're so right. Everybody needs to be included and heard. So as we transition through the summer and into the next year, um, I look forward to working together, to building bridges and to carrying forward. They will now have um, entertain motion um, nominations for vice chair. Chair Henson, this is Regent Finan. I would like to nominate Lisa Damaris for vice chair. Okay, are there any other nominations? And I would like to nominate Damon Allen for vice chair. Damon brings strategic a uh, business background, military background, and an understanding of statewide workings um, to the system. Damon, do you accept the nomination? Thank you, Madam Chair, and yes, I accept. Okay. And Lisa, did you accept Karen's nomination? Uh, Madam Chair, yes, I accept the nomination. Are there any other nominations? This is Mark. I would nominate uh, James Lee Stevens if he's interested. Okay. James Lee, do you accept the nomination? No, ma'am. Okay. No, ma'am. Right. All right. If there are no additional nominations, um, we'll ask for uh, statements. Uh, in the order that they were nominated. So, Lisa. Thank you, Chair Henson. Um, I, I don't want to reiterate what I had just said a few moments ago, so if you wouldn't mind just keeping my previous comments in mind. Uh, the one thing I do want to add, however, to those comments is that for the past year, I have worked alongside Chair Henson um, in this year of uh, change, as we've discussed at length during meetings yesterday and today. We have a good working relationship. Uh, we worked together to uh, discuss various aspects of the Presidential Search Committee. I sit on the Presidential Search Committee and all of the work that will entail um, as we go forward with um, our search for a new leader for KCTCS. We worked extremely well together, and I, I really do appreciate her insight, her input, and her guidance. I imagine she will continue to chair this presidential search committee and would hope that I would be able to continue in my role on that committee working with her. Um, I also worked with Chair Hansen in the discussions with CPE relative to the tuition um, guidelines that they issue each year. Uh, we were both very much on par with where we needed to go with that. And I think our conversations directly with Chair Brandsetter of CPE had a huge impact on how that particular board voted. And so I ask for your support, given that Chair Henson is going to remain as chair, that uh, we keep the band together, so to speak. <laughs> Thank you. Damon. So good morning, everybody. Um, so I appreciate the nomination. I'm happy to serve uh, KCTCS in any matter that is required of me. Um, my focus from the time I, I was appointed to the board was to focus on our mission of improving the quality of life and the employability of all Kentucky citizens. I bring a breadth of experience. Um, I am happy to serve, but to reiterate what Regent Stevens said, I do want to see our board uh, more united, communicate better. Um, so I am happy to serve, but also I am not upset if we continue with Regent Damaris. I think all of the regions have done a, a fine job, but we need to communicate better. So I'm happy to serve in any capacity that you would like. I've got a lot of experience 
with governance, with the, the governors, various governor administrations themselves in my day job, uh, testifying before uh, the Ohio Senate Ways and Com Means Committee, things of that nature. Uh, but really, I want us as a board to make whatever decision is in the best interest of the KCTCS brand and the students, the 100,000 plus students that we serve. So thank you and I appreciate the nomination. Thank you. Um, all right, so we're ready for the vote. Mike, would you call the roll? Yes, ma'am, we'll do. And Allen. Regent Allen, uh, obviously I'm not gonna vote against myself, so yes, <laughs> for me. Demers. Regent Damaris. Uh, likewise, Regent Damaris <laughs> votes for Regent Damaris. Regent Finan. Regent Finan, my vote goes to Regent Damaris. Very well, thank you. Regent Fletcher. Regent Fletcher, and my vote will go to Regent Damaris. Regent Fultz. Regent Fultz, and my vote will go to Regent Damaris. Thank you, Regent Girdler. Regent Girdler. Regent Girdler, and my vote goes to Regent Damaris. Thank you, sir. Regent McDermott. Uh, Regent McDermott, my vote goes to Regent Allen. Thank you, sir. Regent Rose. Regent Rose, and mine goes to Regent Damaris. Thank you, ma'am. Regent Roth. <laughs> Regent Roth, my vote is for Regent Allen. Thank you, ma'am. Regent Stevens. Regent Stevens, my vote is for Lisa Demerit. Thanks, sir. Regent T. Han. Regent T. Han, and my vote is for Damon Allen. Ma'am. Regent Thompson. Regent Thompson, and my vote is for Damaris. Thank you. Regent Wells. Regent Wells, and my vote is for Regent Damaris. Sir, Chair Henson. Our vote is for Regent Allen. Thank you, ma'am. So we have one, two, three, four votes for Regent Allen, and one, two, three, four, five, six and a half votes for. Regent Damaris. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven votes. Okay. All right. Let's get, thank you. And I think we all look forward to working with each other um, for the coming year. All right. So we, our final position is for secretary. Do I have some nominations? Regent, uh, Chair Henson, I would like to nominate Regent Fletcher for Secretary of the Board of Regents for KCTCS. Regent um, Fletcher stepped in uh, due to the recent, um, I guess, retirement or need for uh, Mary to, to vacate that role. Uh, she stepped in quickly. She is... Um, well known throughout the state as well uh, as many of the other regions on the board. However, she's um, really a, a excellent representative of this uh, board of regents. She took on the job uh, without hesitation. She has always been very happy to serve and very excited to do whatever it takes to help KCTCS. And I believe that Regent Fletcher would do an excellent job uh, as secretary to the Board of Regents in this coming year. Are there other nominations? Um, 
Chair Henson, I'm wondering if uh, Regent Allen would consider running for secretary. Um, I think I think we could use his voice, and I know that he's a big believer in the system and in public education, and um, he would speak to a segment of our students that I think is important, and I think he would be a wonderful addition to an, as an officer to the board. Okay, do both of you accept those nominations? I do accept. I, and I also accept. All right, are there any other nominations? All right, um, Mike, would you proceed with the roll call? Yes, ma'am. Again. Can I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but Chair, are we not allowed to make four speeches? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. Uh, when do you want, you were nominated first. Okay, thank you. Regent Damaris, I thank you for the nomination and fellow board members, I thank you for the opportunity to serve. Um, this is my one and only meeting so far as the secretary, but as um, Regent Damaris pointed out, um, I am eager to serve and happy to continue doing so. Um, it's interesting as we go forward um, with many of the changes that have happened um, being centered around um, a, he a health care issue, um, a disease pandemic that um, I feel with my nursing background that I can bring some leadership and some uh, advocacy to those issues as needed for the board as well as for the system. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to serve on this board for the last two years. I would like to point out that my um, attendance at all of the meetings has come at some personal sacrifice um, at times, but I have been happy to make those sacrifices to be able to step up and serve um, the people of the Commonwealth in this position. It has been an absolute honor um, to work with each and every one of you. I feel like every single meeting, um, we are, are all together that I learned so much from each of you. Um, I have appreciated um, each and every one of you and what you've brought to the board. And um, thank you for allowing me to serve alongside you. Um, as the secretary, I know it's, it's a little bit of a formality, but I promise to use my voice as big as it can sometimes be um, for the good of the board and for the good of KCTCS across the Commonwealth. I believe in the mission of this organization um, and I have seen firsthand um, what the results of a KCTCS education can bring um, in bettering the lives of Kentuckians. And again, um, I will do what I can to serve in that capacity. So thank you all for the nomination. It's an honor just to be nominated and win or lose, I will support this board and its members fully. Thank you. Damon. So I would just echo what I said earlier. Um, you know, it has been an honor to be on this board. I'm all about the mission, the brand, and ensuring that we um, do what is best for our students, for our citizens, for the Commonwealth. And I will continue to do that, navigate uh, in any way that I can. Um, I appreciate, uh, you know, this nomination as well. Um, and I would support KCTCS in any way possible. I think you all know uh, my experience dealing with corporate board um, and some of the governance uh, things that I bring to the board, my experience um, with the local, state, and federal legislators, um, which I think is a great asset for advancing the mission of KCTCS, particularly as funding becomes uh, continues to be a challenge for us, um, which I think is is a critical uh, skill that I bring to the table. So I would ask for your vote, and I do thank all the regions for their consideration. And again, I just would uh, echo the sentiment that uh, Regent Stevens shared earlier. I, I am all about advancing and making sure that we have the best Board of Regents, that we have the best community and technical college system in the country. So thank you again. Thank you. And I just think that uh, this is a really wonderful opportunity to, to show that commitment that everybody who's agreed to run has. So um, Mike, would you proceed with the roll call, please? Yes, ma'am. Regent Allen? 
Sorry, it's a robocall. <laughs> Regent <laughs> Allen, I, I vote for Regent Allen. Regent Damaris. Regent Damaris, I vote for Regent Fletcher. Regent Finan. Regent Finan, I vote for Regent Fletcher. Thank you. Regent Fletcher. Regent Fletcher, and I vote for Regent Fletcher. Regent Fultz. Regent Fultz, and I vote for Regent Fletcher. One more time, please. Regent Fultz, and I vote for Regent Fletcher. Thank you, ma'am. Regent Girdler. Regent Girdler, and I vote for Regent Fletcher. Thank you, sir. Regent McDermott. Regent McDermott, and I vote for Regent Allen. Thank you. Regent Rose. Regent Rose, and I vote for Regent Fletcher. Roth. Regent Roth, I vote for Regent Allen. Regent Stevens. Regent Stevens votes for Regent Fletcher. Thank you. Regent Tehan. Regent T. Hanna, and I vote for Regent Allen. Thank you, ma'am. Regent Thompson. <clears throat> Regent Thompson, and I vote for Fletcher. I'm sorry? I vote for Regent Fletcher. Thank you, ma'am. Regent Wells. Regent Wells, and I vote for Regent Fletcher. Thank you, sir. Chair Henson. Chair Henson, I vote for Regent Allen. Thank you. The tally is one, two, three, four votes. One, two, three, four, six, seven votes for Regent Fletcher. Regent Fletcher is the big. Okay, congratulations. Thank you. All right. So, Madam Chair, my. Am I allowed to just make a quick comment? Yes. So I, I appreciate everybody nominating me. Uh, that's flattering. Um, again, I just want to see us as a board move forward in full cooperation and open communication. And I would just say congratulations to Chair Henson, to Vice Chair Desmaris, and to Secretary Fletcher. Uh, and just let all of you know uh, I'm going to support all of you uh, to my maximum and full capacity. So, and thank you again for everyone's consideration. So we have a lot of work to do uh, before our next meeting. We'll be um, convening the search committee um, later on this summer. Um, we will integrate all the comments that you've made both at this meeting and in your other comments as we develop the profile for our, um, our new president. Um, and so I know Damon and Lisa will be serving on that along with people from each end of the state on each role group. So I look forward to working with you and uh, making this a strong year, a bridge building year for us. So the next meeting of the KCTCS Board of Regents will be held September 17th and 18th, 2020 at the system office in Versailles. We don't know if it will be remote or in person, but we'll be meeting. So I'd like to call for the motion to adjourn. Madam Chairman, more than happy. I'm glad to see everybody, especially to you, Chris. You look lovely today. I make a motion we adjourn. All right, is there a second? Jackie Tehan, second. I'd like to call for the vote, Mr. Murray. Mike. Somebody muted me. <laughs> yes, ma'am.
All right, Regent Allen. Yes. Regent Damaris. Regent Damaris, yes. Regent Finan. Regent Finan, yes. Regent Fletcher. Regent Fletcher, yes. Regent Fultz. Regent Fultz, yes. Regent Gurgler. Oh, yes. Regent Gurdler. Regent Gurdler, aye. <laughs> Regent McDermott. Uh, it wouldn't be a proper final meeting for me if uh, James Lee wasn't the one to uh, vote to dismiss us, so I vote yes. <laughs> Regent Rose. Regent Rose, yes. Regent Roth. Regent Roth, yes. Your final vote, huh? Yep. Regent Stevens. Oh, yes. <laughs> Regent Tehan. Yes. Regent Thompson. Yes. Regent Wells. Regent Wells, yes. Chair Henson. Chair Henson, yes. So the chair carries unanimously. All right, and the meeting adjourns at 12.31 p.m. Again, we thank uh, each of the regents, especially those departing, Rhonda, Jackie, John, and Marsha for their service. And we look forward to our future work. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.